start. Start, start. Time to start. Time to start the funny show. Funny Hello, show. Hello, everyone. Start the funny show right now. Start the funny show right now. I do a tiny little scream. Do no. Don't do it. No, Danny I said scream. don't do it, and you Danny. did it. Ah. Danny scream. Do a scream. Do a tiny do little a scream. Pim. Do a scream. Do a scream. Do I do a scream. scream. You do a scream, and we do a scream. You do a scream, and I do a scream. Do, do, do. I do a scream. You, you do a scream, a scream and do I do a scream. scream. I do a scream, then you do a scream. That's the way that a scream works. You do a scream. Ah! You do a scream. Ah! We both did, did a, scream. a scream. We both did, did a, a scream. Do, 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 do. I don't do, 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 a tiny do, do. scream. Discord's still not working. Oh, oh the stremmy? Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know what? I might have to reset it completely. That's what the problem might be. Hi, CZ. <laughs> okay, so basically, yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so basically, everyone get out. Okay, so basically, uh, get the fuck out. Okay, I can't start without this. I need to connections. <laughs> Come on, I need to look at it. Fuck streamer mode. <sighs> streamer mode. Damn boy, he went <sighs> streamer mode. Damn bro. I'm gonna try to streamer mode. Authorize that again. Hijacking oh shit, I don't have any water. Fuck. <laughs> Don't have any water. I need to get water. Take it from the rats. Oh yeah. Okay. Hi, <laughs> Jack. Okay. Bye. See you soon. <laughs> I did just like drink a bunch though. I, okay. You're I have, have to go I have pee -pee. one sip. I have one sip. When I go pee pee, you're gonna have to go pee pee uh, in the middle of the podcast. Um, when I go pee pee, I'll just get more water. Yeah, but that. You, you're gonna have pee pee in the middle of the podcast? I went last time and did a little know. stretch. You just have to deal with it. I go people all the time. I don't know. I'm a little people feed. I'm a little posture check. Thank you. Alright, how about now? Nope, still doesn't work. Okay, fuck you. I hate this fucking thing. You know what? I'll just figure it out during the podcast, I guess. Fucking stupid. Stupid thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now I have to post on Twitter. And I still oh, have to get I still have to get rid of voice meter. Hello voicemeter.com. Hello voicemeter.com, you suck. Yeah. Welcome to the rat. Welcome to the rat. Welcome to the rat. Welcome to the rat. Come to the rat. To the rat. This rat is for free. This rat is for free. And be too big. Hashtag say suck my own pee pee. Hashtag suck my ass, loser. <laughs> That's a hashtag. That's a hashtag. hashtag. You know how it is. We gotta stick together because family is the best thing that we have. It's true. Right. It's my hashtag. It's my hashtag, actually. But okay. What? Actually, it's uh, my hashtag. 
That's my hashtag. I just told it to the circle right now. <laughs> the circle? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Circle when? Circle right now. Let's just watch the circle for the podcast. Okay. I fixed it, by the way. I fixed it. Who? Discord? Me. How'd you fix it? I fixed it by resetting my connections to Twitch. Oh, yeah, it probably broke after yeah. the, after you reset everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I think we can yeah, start. Yeah. Right now? Right now. Unless you'd like to right banter now, right a bit now, right more. Now. No, I'm done no. bantering forever. Oh, okay. Ah, forever? Okay, goodbye. Mm -hmm. pew, 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 you're dead. I'll never. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Fucking dead, bro. You yeah. gonna share your thing on Discord so oh. I can look? Oh, I forgot. So I can put my little eye in there. Tip it a bit. A bit a bit. A skip it a bit. Pop pop. Skip it a bit. A bit 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 uh, save room sleeper? save room music on loop should I keep playing yeah. that or should I put something else on that's a pretty epic song okay like all right this is the day the banter died this is the day bebop died forever what <laughs> all right are you ready yeah. okay no Oh, hello. hello. We're in the studio now? How'd we get here? We're in the studio. Got to lay down a sick rap. Sick rap about what? About Resident Evil. Oh, okay. You ready? Go. Mm -hmm. For a rap? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Resident Evil. Real scary. Ethan's arms. Not very hairy. Mm-hmm. Oh. Now you go. Um, he's so resident. He's like... A doctor is about mm -hmm. to get someone's proctor getting heavy. Mm -hmm. He's real mm -hmm. sweaty. He hasn't Oof. slept in 24 hours. He's going home, getting dreams. He is dreaming about not being here. Having dreams. No more screams. Ethan will eat some leaves. Eat the leaves. Walk up to the house. It is dark. I'm going home. My wife's not worth it. Return to home. Start a new life. Get a new wife. Get a new child. Don't go to Resident Evil 8. Pretty good. Can you believe they put that rap on the disc for Resident Evil 7? Yeah, really. It was in the director's cut for Resident Evil 7, actually. Yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah, I, I really liked it. Honestly. Me too, me too. That, uh, that's why we memorized all the words after all. Yeah, exactly. Can you even handle these beats? Yeah, put a put a Resident Evil 7 type beat in the background and uh you'll get the dope original actually. <laughs> yeah. True, just look it up on YouTube. Yeah, just just look it up on YouTube exactly. Yeah. My table okay. is sticky. Huh? Yeah, it's sticky. Why? I think it's because of the popsicle cuz I put lemon in it and it falls. Oh. Yeah. Don't let it do that anymore. <laughs> you ever eat a popsicle? It just kind of just goes where yeah. it wants to. You don't have to let it drip on the table. Well, I don't like to. I, that's why I go when I eat. So I, it you doesn't have to drip. put your head under it like a little bird waiting to catch some water. Oh my god. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, your yeah. mouth doesn't move when you do that. Oh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> okay, it moves that way. All right. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Okay. Should we talk about the actual thing that we're here for today? <laughs> yeah, the Resident Evil 2? Yeah, Resident Evil 2. That's right. And who's the who's the protagonist of Resident Chris? Evil 2? Right, Chris. What's his last name? Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, that's right. Mm -hmm. And where is he? 
um, caves, salt mine underneath. Mm -hmm. In the salt, yep, underneath yep. the salt mine, and yep. his partner, Lucia Gwendolyn. Yep, Lucia Gwendolyn and mm -hmm. Chris Hemsworth, and yeah. they fight. What are they fighting? Scrumbo. Right, Scrumbo, and yeah. and Scrunkly. And Scrunkly, right? This, okay. This is the game Scrunkly's from. That that's right. Scrunkly is from Resident Evil Two with Chris Hemsworth and uh, his partner. Scrum and they fight them. Scrungo. No. No. That's not his Lucia. partner. That's not what you said. Lucia Gwendolyn. Yeah, Lucia. Yeah. Right. Lucia Gwendolyn. Yeah. And that's all in Resident Evil Two. That is all in Resident Evil Two. That's true. Right. And what you remember Resident Evil One? Yeah. Chris Hemsworth. Mm -hmm. Chris Hemsworth is in there. Yeah, and his partner, uh, Penny Wise. Penny Wise? Not yeah. related to the clown, no relation. No, no. Okay. And you remember where they are in that game? You in a mansion. Game. In a mansion. They're in the mansion. And mm -hmm. whose mansion is it? Scrungo's. Scrungo, the guy from two. The yeah. same guy? Yeah, the same guy. Okay, it makes sense. They chase him after the end of one, right? Yeah, exactly. They chase him out of the mansion, and then two starts. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you do remember all your Resident Evil lore. That's good. What do you think? You think Chris Hemsworth and Penny Wise and Lucinda Hellblade will be in Resident Evil 3? I think I'm broken. Oh, no. Inside? <laughs> no, I think my tracking fucked up. Oh, no. I think I'm broken inside. Oh, whoa. Are you well? Oh, whoa. Oh, God. I'm broken, I think. <laughs> oh. I reset the position. And mm -hmm. it's kind of fucky. Okay. Oh, I think all I'm alright. Right. I think I'm okay now. You seem okay. I think I'm all... Is O working? <laughs> I was late. It was alright. Happy. Should really play this game. It's a good game. It's a good game. Anyway, what were you saying, Bebop, before I cut so, you off? So, what's going to happen in three? So, in three, they go to. Chris again is in there? Chris Hemsworth? No. No, no new guy? This is a different guy. This is Lucas. Lucas? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And his partner. Shirley. Lucas and Shirley, that's right. Yeah. In Resident Evil 3. Mm hmm. And. There's a third guy? They are. And they're in. Uh, Where are they? Salt mine again. They're back in the salt mine, that's true, because it takes place at the same time as 2. That's right. Yes. And they are fighting. Zombies. Okay, so no more Scrungo and Scrunkly, only no, zombies. No, no, Zombo now. Okay, Zombo, the, mm. the creator of Zombie. Yeah, Zombie okay. is the plural right. of Zombo. Oh, I see. Yeah. So here has already basically knows everything about Resident Evil One, Two, and Three. So that's why we're talking about Resident Evil Seven today. Y yep. Just makes sense, but. Hare played Resident Evil 7 many moons ago on twitch.tv slash ago? hair in a cup. It was a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe like six months. That's a lot of moons. That's six moons, correct. That's more than six moons. That's maybe a dozen moons or so. What? No. There's a moon every, every yeah. month once. No. There there's a, there's moons? multiple moons every month. Oh my god. Every That's day they put up a new <laughs> moon. <laughs> uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Alright. Um, but you played it. This was the first time you've ever played any Resident Evil game. Okay, You're so this is where we Resident actually Evil. start talking seriously? Okay. Huh? We were talking seriously the whole time. This is true. Oh my god. Oh, I I don't feel so good. <laughs> Whoa. The residents got you. <laughs> I'm dead. 
Oh, well. All right. I'm rematerializing. Okay, it's going to take a little bit, but it's all right. All right, go on. Yeah, this is the first time that I actually played a Resident Evil game. I thought Resident Evil games were just, like, nothing. I didn't know they existed before I played 7. Welcome back, sort of. Mm. You're rainbow now. That's very pretty. Suits you. I'm Vaporwave. <laughs> um... But yeah, this was the first time you played Resident Evil. You wanted to play it because you wanted to play a spooky game. Yes. Uh, was it was it October when you started playing it? Um. Why did you want to play a spooky game? Oh, because I hit affiliate and I played Silent Hill 1, but it wasn't spooky at all. Right, okay. Yeah, you wanted to play a spooky game for hitting affiliate. Yes. And you played Silent Hill 1 and mm. you didn't like it really. Well, no, I so, just didn't like the spooky part because it's not spooky, right? I bet it's a good game, but it just wasn't scary. And I wanted a okay. scary game. All right. So you, I think I, maybe multiple people recommended Resident Evil 7. And then you streamed it. I think, how many streams did it take you to beat? Oh, boy. Like, well, the first one, so the, so the first one... Is the only one that's not recorded because that was pre-debut and I didn't record my stuff before uh, my debut, mm. like a moron. Um, but I can check, but it took a little bit. It took, I don't know, maybe like 10 hours to finish it in general. Okay, okay. but uh, you finished it and then you played like one dlc but you didn't get the like good ending i didn't get the good and ending crashed and then your it crashed yeah <laughs> right uh, and I then you played actually... like one of the mm -hmm. one of the side mini game dlcs for like 10 minutes right what the, the zoe the one 21 no the 21 dlc the 20 oh yeah that one Black is Jack. the one that crashed yeah that's the one that crashed? That's the one that crashed. I can't find it actually because they wouldn't let me name a folder Resident Evil for some reason. Never mind. I don't know how many parts it took. Okay. The poker. Point yeah. is, uh, you played it and you got through it eventually. And then you did a little bit of the extra stuff. You never played um, the free DLC that came out. It was kind of like the conclusion to the story. Um. But I think you didn't play it because we told you that it was really action oriented. Yeah. And you didn't really want to play that. No, I'm not. I'm but fine that, with you telling me what's in there, though. Yeah, we can get to that. Obviously, Resident Evil 7 spoilers. This game's been out for like five years, six years, or something. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you don't want this spoiled, yes. go play it and don't watch this. But I guess we'll start with. How, how do you feel about Resident Evil 7? Me? I loved it. I think it was really fun. It was a really nice game. Um, <laughs> I got spooked with the insect lady that one time. Uh, so that was yeah. nice. Funny um, jump scare. Funny jump scares, yes, I got spooked that- No, one time, I mean like one stream that I was really like on edge. I don't know why. <laughs> But I was just really on edge that time. And uh Yeah, but that's when the jump scare happens, right? Yeah, no, that's when both of those jump scares happen, I believe. <laughs> mm, yeah. So those are nice. And then I liked the story. What I wasn't a fan of though, uh, was when you told me, oh, they kinda like revamped the entire story, right? But then it's still it's like the infection, it's still the same thing, like with the zombies. It's just an experiment. No. It's <laughs> It's not the same thing as the zombies, so. Okay, it's not exactly the same, but it's it's so similar. It's like basically almost the same thing, right? No. Okay. It's very different. No, oh, I see. Okay. Sorry. So the experience from the other games are totally different to the experience in this game then. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the thing about 7 is it's like... It's a pretty big departure from all the other games, obviously, not only because it's the first Resident Evil the first mainline Resident Evil that's in first person, but it's kind of a common theme for a lot of the other viruses and whatnot from the other games to kind of link together mm -hmm. because 
in the first game obviously there's the t virus which is what makes people zombies and then that virus gets worked on by a man named uh william birkin and that gets adapted into the g virus which is like an off spin of the t virus right yeah and then that virus eventually uh shows up in three obviously because three takes place at the same time as two and then in four it's like a completely different thing but it's actually kind of related to the g virus because you later learn that ada from resident evil 2 is working with albert wesker and he got a sample of the g virus from ada and maybe kind of probably gave it to um the people from resident evil 4 and they made las plagas which is a parasite so now we're moving into parasite instead of like virus you know that one's from spain right that one takes place in spain mm. and it's a parasite and then in five it's like an, a spin-off of that parasite <clears throat> kind of it's called uroboros um and it's also a parasite but it like acts differently and then six is a whole mess of a game um because in six you have people getting cloned and there's a zombie t-rex at one point and there's also the t-virus but it comes back as a in a different form and then there's like a big dude what the fuck is he called he's called like er 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 something i don't remember his name Urkel. but he's like a big guy yeah urkel <laughs> so it also has urkel which is like its own thing which is similar to like nemesis from resident evil 2 he's like the big guy that chases you around have you seen clips of that before no you've never seen in resident evil 2 remake the the big guy in the trench coat with the fedora that chases you around um i don't think so <laughs> oh but he's kind of like based off of that sort of and then there's also another infection that is similar to the one from five but that one is also a parasite so by the time we hit resident evil 6 we have a virus we have a like genetic mutations and crafted organisms and we also have parasites we got so it all in seven in seven we have we have an experiment well, Genetic but mutation. What no. What? What is it? It's a fungus. Right. It's a mold. Right. But it, that's like a genetic mutation because it mutates with humans, doesn't it? Um, it kind of, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Okay. Right. But like the mold is like very clearly its own thing. Like a molded, the enemies you fight in seven don't really look like humans, you know? Right. It's clearly like completely taken over the body and changed its entire shape and whatnot. Uh, yeah, but I mean, hmm, okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, what? You got something to say? No, I mean, like it still takes over the body, so it's a mutation yeah, in it a does. way. Yeah, that's true. I guess okay. technically all of the different viruses and whatnot in Resident Evil are mutations in one way or another. So that's true. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Do you want to walk through Resident Evil 7 as best as you remember it? Oh god. Oh no. I don't remember that much. But okay. The underlying... I can help you if you need it. Okay, let me just read this. Underlying story is essentially oh. American corporate greed. Everything else is a distraction. Yeah, that's a pretty big theme in Resident Evil. No. We, c we can go over all the different companies as well but i don't know because that's basically just me talking about more lore bullshit <laughs> you can talk about whatever you want all right so in resident evil 7 so basically at the start of the game you see your girlfriend or wife fiance is she she's his wife yeah wife okay your wife mia and she's on a boat she sends you a video she's on a boat and she's <laughs> like hi i'm having a great time uh and that's more or less that doesn't she apologize in that video like for being that's gone? the next video that's the next video she has like two videos back to back yeah okay so first she's all like oh i'm having a great time blah 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 blah, blah. i'm so pretty and whatnot and then this the, then the second video plays and it's all dark and stuff and she goes don't don't 
come here. No, no, no. She says to find her. Yeah, yeah. No? No, no, no. Hmm. She says don't. She says don't come here. Don't look for me. Oh, yeah. She, okay, okay. So I am remembering right. So she, says, she says don't come for me. Don't follow me. Okay, but then a third video plays, doesn't it? Or something. Or a no, letter? No, it's just the two. She, does he... he does get like a letter, yeah. Okay, yeah, so... So then he's like, oh, Mia, you're alive. Because she went missing mm -hmm. for like three years or something. And, you know, not a very good wife if I'm being honest, but all right. And then he gets a letter, question mark. And mm -hmm. it has the address, and it and that one pleads it's from Mia. Yeah, yeah from yeah, yeah. Mia, from Mia. And that one pleads for him to help find her. Right. Right. And so, you know, he packs up. He goes to Louisiana to the address. And... Do you remember the name of the city? No. Greenhill. Dolby. Oh, <laughs> close. Is that important? No. I just yeah. wanted to see if you remembered or not. No, I don't even. I didn't even know they said the name of the city. It was in okay. the newspapers. I think so. Yeah. Oh no, I don't know. Yes. Uh, so then he goes Go there, on. and he mm -hmm. goes looking for her, and so he stops his car in front of the mansion that you can see on the cover right there. That's the mansion. Stops his car, and it's all like uh, gated around. There's a fence. And so he tries to find his way in, uh, and he does, and there's like, you know, dead animals and antlers with blood on them and dead crows and whatnot. And mm -hmm. during this sequence, when he like goes around the garden is when he first sees Jack, one of the one of the main guys. I could probably find a graphic for all of them. I didn't prepare it because I didn't think that far ahead, but I could I could get a little graphic. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is like too graphic or not, so I'll just use a, I'll just use a nice one. Use the one with his little birthday hat on. He's got a birthday hat. Birthday mm -hmm. hat. <laughs> is this a mod? No, it's from a DLC. A what? Yeah, it's called Jack's fifty-fifth birthday. Oh, I I don't have that DLC. You do. I do. Yeah, it's like a side game mode. Oh, all of these pictures are really bad quality. <laughs> Go ahead, put up the low resolution. Okay. Okay, I will. Why not? Um. Oh shit! I need to organize this better. Okay, new folder. Uh, new folder. Random pictures. <laughs> mm. Jack. All right, I'm putting him up. I'm putting him up. And Good. that's a uh, that's when you first see Jack. And um, you kind of just get a glimpse at him. There's not, you know, there's not much. There he is. There he is. There's my boy. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put him, I'm gonna put him right here, just on, right just on the, on the table. table, yeah, just on the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you first see this guy. Uh, uh, actually, I'm gonna put it up a bit more just so we can actually see him. There he is. He's very beautiful, very gorgeous. Okay, mm -hmm. you can see him right now. Back to small. Here we go. And uh, obviously he's not this pretty. When you first see him, you just kind of get a glimpse at him, and you're like, "Hey, hey, what's what's going on?" And he disappears. And afterwards, you get into the mansion, and you kind of just go around, you explore a bit, and uh, you find these tapes around that kind of give you, um, kind of show you like what happened in the house prior to you getting there. And uh, it also helps you like solve puzzles and whatnot sometimes. And the first, the first one that you find is of these three people who go ghost hunting in this uh -huh. house. 
uh, because I think they heard like a murder or something, or maybe it was just a, maybe it was just a scary house. I don't remember the details. Clancy, yeah, that's one of them. And um, yes. yeah, and then you know they go around. Do you remember the other two's names? Robert and Bobbert. <laughs> yeah, it's them, Robert and Bobbert. <laughs> Yeah, so Clancy's the cameraman, I think, right? Clancy's the cameraman. Then there's Andre. Right. Andre's the weird one. And then one. there's... there's Andre Bobbert. is the, like, not the main guy. And then there's oh. Bobbert, right? Hmm. Yeah, so Clancy, Andre, and Bobbert, they go into the house. And they kind of just go like, ooh, it's very spooky. But then the house, like, closes or something, and they can't get out. And they're like, oh, what the fuck, man? What the shit? We gotta get out. This ain't funny no more. And Jack, uh, like, no, they start disappearing. You're disappearing, too. They start disappearing. And Clancy is the one who, you know, films it all. <laughs> You're very pretty in Rainbow, by the way. Thank you. Mm, yeah. And, um... Clancy is just like, hey, it's not funny. Come out, everyone. And, um... <laughs> not what happens, but yeah, go on. Not what happens? <laughs> no. What happens? I forget. I know he, like, goes looking for them, though. Bobbert is standing in front of, like, a thing, and he tells Clancy, he says, hey, get, get some B-roll of me standing in front of this thing. Oh. And Andre walks off into the hallway, and you can't follow him. There's, like, an invisible wall there. Um, but then he's like just missing and then Bobbert is like hey Andre where's Andre so you and Bobbert go to try to find Andre together right mm. and you walk down that hallway and then into the room on the right the little living room where the fireplace is yeah and then they go down the fireplace mm -hmm. and and then Clancy goes first I think and he falls he breaks his foot and Bobbert goes after him question mark and he dies and he gets spiked by Jack he gets put on a spike um something like that something like yeah, that you, you, perfect you go down and you see Andre is like impaled on a pipe and then I'm pretty sure that tape just like ends there uh -oh. oh Andre's the one on a pipe okay mm -hmm. So that's he's just down there when you get down there yeah so that's what happens and uh then i think you get knocked out by jack after this don't you who when you're playing as clancy oh no 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 you no 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 you get knocked out much later so uh, after that you keep you know you keep exploring and whatnot and uh you go into this like you go where the cameraman went. You went. You go where and Andre uh -huh. was, and you you swim through this thing, and there you can see um, Bobbert's head floating in the water. His whole body. His whole body, even. And so that's the uh -huh. first jump scare. And you swim through that. You get into this like basement area, and and you find Mia, and you're like, oh my god, Mia, what the fuck? What's going on? She goes, hurry up, Daddy will find you. Go away! I told you not to come! And you go, no, me, I love you so much! And go get you out of here! You try to get her out, and you get her out of the cell, and then you and Mia go through more of the basement until you get to like this point where there isn't that much, there's like a room. And after that. Well, you get to the room where Mia is confused because. She says there used to be a door here. Oh, yes. Yes. She says there mm -hmm. used to be a door there. So she's very sad and, like, frustrated. You have to find it for her. So you find the door, and then no, you... No, no, you don't, you don't find that door. <laughs> you find... You go a different way. What? Because the door she's talking about comes back way later on in the game, remember? No. You end, you end up, like... Like, way, way later on in the game, you end up coming back into that room yeah. from the other side where that door she thought was there. There's a door? Yeah, they, like, covered it up. But you, like, come through it way later. Okay. Because you're on the other side of it. Oh, okay. So you don't find that door mm -hmm. then. But you find another way through. Mm -hmm. And when you find another way through, Mia starts going bonkers. And, uh... 
she starts turning into a fungus and well you, you don't see her start turning into a fungus but she starts going bonkers and she like she she rips your arm off your hand what does she do with it she stabs you first first she's she yeah she impales your hand and it gets stuck to the wall behind you yeah can you prevent that by the way it's a quick action but can you prevent no. that no. no so why is it a quick action and she has a just to make you feel stressed out when it's, you play it <laughs> there's like three because you, you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> there's like three quick actions in the entire game none of them are preventable yeah just to spook you ah. the first time you're playing you don't know what's gonna happen you think oh i gotta press this fast enough or i'm gonna fail <laughs> Yeah. All right. So you get you get stabbed in the hand, and you get. Uh, and then she uses her chainsaw. Yeah, and then she uses her chainsaw to rip your arm off. Not arm, hand. Mm -hmm. He rips your arm, uh, hand off. And mm -hmm. then you have to fight her. Um, I think. Well, before, um, before this happens, you get a phone call. Oh, Zoe from... calls right here. She calls you, I think, right after you like beat Mia down the first time. You're like using an axe or something mm -hmm. to like melee her, and then yeah. she, Ethan, thinks she's dead. Mm -hmm. And then Zoe calls you, and she tells you to go through the attic. That's why you head out that way. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Um, I don't remember. The details. Well, Ethan thinks Mia is very dead. He thinks he killed her. So he walks back out into that hallway that we were in earlier and is going to head for the attic. But then the whole stab hand, remove hand thing happens, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Ethan runs up to the attic and then you have to fight Mia up there. Right. So you fight Mia. She With has one hand. One hand. Do you have a pistol yet? Yeah, you get the pistol. Okay, you get the pistol. And she runs down with the chainsaw. And you have to fight her. The fight's not very mm -hmm. hard. She just kind of runs at you. You have to mm -hmm. boop her in the head like five times. And she drops. And you go over to her dead body. And that's when you get knocked out. Right. I think you, yeah. you are like going up to escape through the attic when Jack snatches you. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you do that, and then Jack turns you around, and he's, he says, Welcome to the family, son! And he knocks you out. He punches you in the face. Right. Punches you on the top of the soft spot. Yeah, yeah, right on top of that soft spot. Just like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and next thing you know, you're at a feast with the entire family. So there's Jack, there's Mer Myrtle? Miriam? What's her name? <laughs> Marguerite. Marguerite. And Jackson. Lucas. Lucas. And Grandma. They're all there. Grandma. Grandma. But you can, like, barely see Grandma. She only, like, has her hand in there, kind of. But you can turn around, I guess. Kind of forgot you mm. could do that, but yeah. And they're just talking to you. Kind of making sure you eat, making sure you're a big grown boy. And then when you don't want to eat, they get really angry at you because it's a feast and they prepared it just for you. So Marguerite's, yeah. Marguerite's like, I told you he's not going to fucking eat it. Oh my God. And he go, and then Jack goes, oh, he's going to eat it all right. So he goes in and he uh, starts putting a knife down your throat. And kind of like twiddles it around your teeth and tongue and whatnot, which makes me really, really question his ability to speak for the rest of the game, because he sounds like nothing is wrong. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't like get the knife into your mouth fully before he gets stopped. I guess, but it's not very clear. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so he does that. And then uh, something interrupts them, but I don't remember what. Do they just stop? Um, a phone call happens. Someone calls the phone. Mm, 
Okay, so someone calls the phone, so they go off. Uh, they go away, and then you kind of drop. And... I think that's more or less it. Then you start the game again. But what about Ethan's hand? Oh yeah, it's sewn. It's sewn with... Stapled. Stapled. Yeah, it's stapled. Sewn and he's got staples. a cool new Apple Watch. <laughs> oh yeah, the Apple Watch. I completely forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you do that. That happens. And then... Oh god, what then? And then you have to you remember? run around the house and solve puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is Resident Evil. That's, yeah. that's what happens. Yeah, but you run around like the uh, kitchen area and the living room, like the first floor, more or less, kind of, of right. that area. And Jack, right. Jack uh, is trying to get you mm -hmm. the entire time. Yeah, he's like, come here, boy, and mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. And there's a part where and there's a part Jack can cut your little leg off. What? You don't remember that? No. It happened to you. I'm pretty sure it's you can avoid it, but I'm pretty sure it happened to you. He he can cut your little foot off, and then he'll put a little medicine on the ground, and you crawl over to it and attach your foot back. What? No, I don't remember that. Yeah. So it's more showing you how you can heal yourself and how Ethan can put his little limbs back together. Oh my god. He's got the fungus. Yeah, he's got the fungus among us. Yeah, he's got the fungus among us, like the Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Okay, well I definitely don't remember that one. But after a while you like solve some puzzles, I believe. But after a bit you uh, see a cop outside the window. He's like, hey, how'd you get in there? And and you're like, hey man, you really gotta help me. These people are crazy. I'm gonna die. He goes, haha, I'm not gonna give you my gun, but I will give you this knife. And Ethan goes, are you crazy? I can't, I can't defend myself with a knife. And the cop says, well, it's the best I can do because I'm not gonna give you a gun. I'm not stupid. Uh, which is smart by the cop. Good for him. So Ethan goes around with a knife. Um, eventually he gets to the garage by solving a couple things and, like, slicing shit. Well, after he gets the knife, he can just go into the garage, because yeah, the opening to the to garage be... is blocked yeah, it's by the tape. duct taped. Yeah. And he goes there, and the cop's there, and he's like, hey, whoa, 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 slow down. Drop your weapons and whatnot. And while he's talking to you... Jack sneaks up behind him and slices his head in half with a shovel. Mm -hmm. And that's like the first mini boss fight. Uh, so you run around well, the, the first the first boss fight is Mia. Right. I I wouldn't really call that a boss fight, but okay. It's definitely a boss fight. All right. Well, that's the second mini boss fight then. <laughs> yeah. And you you run around the garage. And, um, hi, Otsukimun. You run around the garage, and mm -hmm. there's a car in the mm -hmm. middle. So, that's right. That's, yep. And so you need Funny to. Car. Mm -hmm. So you need to kind of like figure out what's happening. When I was playing, though, when I was playing, people fucking. <laughs> they swayed me in the wrong direction. I thought, so when I was playing, I thought you had to find the keys, get in the car, and go away, like drive off. Right, that's not exactly what you do, but it's very close to what you were supposed to do. And then, when I was playing, people told me, No, 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 you don't actually need the keys. I'm like, okay. So I spent like an hour and a half <laughs> trying to win that without going into the car. Because I foolishly believed people. <laughs> no, to be fair... <laughs> We figured out pretty quickly, everyone came to the consensus that you did need the keys, we just didn't know the sequence of events, because, remember, you could get into the car, but Jack would then, like, fuck you up. Yeah. Before you could really do anything. That's kind of where the whole problem happened. Yeah, but that was after, like, 45 minutes, though. No, it didn't take that long. It took about an hour to finish the whole fight. <laughs> I don't think so. No, it took a really long time, yeah. 
I mean, it took a while, but it didn't take more than like 30 minutes. I'm pretty no, sure. No, it took more than 30 minutes. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So that's when you got to uh, get in the car and like kill him for the first time. Because you run into these, uh, what are they called? Steel beams? Mm, yeah. Yeah, so you run into these steel, steel beams and you puncture his head with them and you, you think, okay, so that's done. And then you go, fuck, what do you, what do you, where do you go next? You go back into the house because you can't leave. The, do you go into the, like, the main hall after this? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we don't have to describe all the tiny minutia in every step because that's going to take a long, long time. Wait, that's what you've been doing this whole time, though. I've been, you've been talking the whole time. What are you talking about? Yeah, but you stop when you go, yeah, but then the phone rings. Yeah, but then you right, get your leg That's important because that's the is first it? time you hear about Zoe. No, no, no. That one is. But the leg? <laughs> well, I mean, that's important because that's when you learn about Ethan's, like, regenerative. Regenerative. What is the word I'm looking for? Regenerative. Regeneration powers. His ability to regenerate because you don't know about it. Yeah, regeneratory because mm. you don't know about it before then. All right. So after that, you kind of go around the whole house, more or less, and you get these little quests to do uh, every time, like this, like more kind of, they just guide you in the <laughs> right direction. And the next step you have to do is get into the dis dissection room, I think. Um, ultimately, yeah, eventually. Yeah, I don't remember anything important in between other than, I guess, Zoe calling you sometimes. I mean, you figure out, you see Jack again, and you learn from that point that, like, oh, clearly Jack can regenerate or is hard to kill. Okay, do you want to tell this? Because I don't remember enough, clearly. I only um, remember, like, the main parts. I mean, you're on the right track. It's just important to to bring up that Jack comes back after the car fight because mm. Ethan, and I guess you as a player, are kind of expected to believe that he's dead. But then he, he just shows up like pretty shortly after. Okay. And then chases you through the main house. Okay. He chases mm. you. But ultimately, you end up in the dissection room uh, where you're supposed to get this... It was like a token? Medal? Something it's like, like that. Some emblem or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you collect three of them. Yeah, to open a door. A relief, I think they're called, maybe. A relief. Re relief. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you collect those, and one of them is in the dissection room, and you reach up for it because it's in, it's on a hook, I think, on a chain. You reach up for it, but you fall down, and that's where the second Jack fight happens. He comes at you with a chainsaw, and there's this like meat around it, all around, like this p big pig meat, I believe. And you gotta fight him there, and just kind of dodge and whatnot. But at the end of the fight, you chainsaw him. You chainsaw him in half, like, completely in half. And half of him stays there, and half of it is just gone. So... That... Uh... Made me worry when I was playing the game. <laughs> well, let me ask, the first time, uh, after the car... The funny car fight, did you think Jack was dead? Mm, yeah. Okay, so you were somewhat surprised when you saw him show up again in the house? I believe so. Okay, but what about after the chainsaw boss fight? Did you think he was dead no. then? <laughs> I okay. thought he was gonna so come So it wore off pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Especially okay. after I didn't see his other half. I was like, okay, well that crawled off somewhere. That's yeah. a fucking His other bug. half like bubbles up or whatever. Yeah, I don't... Like, I have no like, bubble up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, yes. so at that point, I kind of thought he was gonna come back at some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think after this, you start going to the second portion of the game, right? Yeah, you mm -hmm. open up the, um, like, the back door. Yeah. And you're out in the kind of, like, open 
the outside for kind of the first time since the beginning. And Zoe's trailer is out there. Yeah, yeah. So the trailer is there. The second house is there. The, the, the lake house, that is. And then, mm -hmm. like, the third tiny house, wherever Lucas is. Uh, that's later, though. Yeah, that's yeah. later, though. So the trailer is a safe zone, uh, which which also has a tiny shop so you can like buy upgrades and whatnot you can save there mm. and i think that's where zoe calls you and tells you that you need a d series arm and another series head i think head, head yeah. yeah so uh you kind of know what your end goal here is because you're kind of everything mm. you do from that point on is to get those uh and after that, you go to the lake house, and that's where the second portion of the game takes place. Um, the mm -hmm. first, so uh, when I was playing, Bebop told me that a funny thing that um, all of the enemies, like the main enemies, are based off of different horror tropes. Uh, so mm -hmm. Jack is a slasher, right? Yes. Yeah, then Marguerite is body, body horror and insects. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lucas is like the uh, psychological horror. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very cool. Yeah, very neat. <laughs> that one's my favorite. Psychological horror is my favorite. I like that one a lot. Yes. Yes. So you go into the lake house. It's full of insects and stuff. And um, I think you'd find a tape there in which you see Mia traversing through the lake house. What about Grandma? Grandma, Grandma's Grandma. Grandma's just being very chill and nice the whole time. She, she just like teleports around grandma, the house. Right. Yeah. You kind of just see Grandma show up here and there yeah. at the top of the stairs. And you're like, how did you get up here? You're in a wheelchair. <laughs> and she always looks at you like, I'm a grandma. <laughs> she quivers. Grandma. Yeah. And uh, so you go to the lake house full of insects uh, and you see the tape. I think you find it either there or slightly before that. Maybe you find it in the trailer or something. I don't remember. And you watch oh. Mia be in the lake house and like go around so you kind of get a feel for uh, a <laughs> nice yawn. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of get a feel for what the lake house is about kind of. Just the ground <laughs> floor. And she is running away from Marguerite and stuff. And she's putting yes. together the puzzle. So, you know, there's a puzzle and how to solve it after that. And she's hiding. And I think it I think it ends with Marguerite just uh, getting her and finding yeah. her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after you get in, you're like, OK, I know what's going on here. You go around. There's a lot of insects. So I kind of need to avoid those. Or do your best to anyway. Uh, you find um, uh, um, what's it called? Like a plan or a flamethrower? Oh, like a, a schematic for a flamethrower. Yeah, yeah, for a flamethrower. And I think you get the uh, grenade thrower too, right? Schematic for it? No, I don't think so. No. Okay, never mind. So just this flamethrower, and uh, if you get the flamethrower parts, which are scattered around that whole thing. You can uh, fight the bugs a lot easier, but it takes a lot of fuel. <laughs> so I, th I think you need it. I think you have to have it to be able to. Really? To um, yeah, you need the oh. flamethrower. Oh okay. Because there's like a door that you have to progress through that has like the hive on it that you mm -hmm. have to burn. Okay. I think. All right. Mm -hmm. So you need this. You need the th flamethrower. Um. You go around, you solve some puzzles, and what happens next? The boss fight. Which one's the first one? Uh, I'm pretty sure Marguerite just has like that one main boss fight, right? No, she has two. Does she? Yeah, she has the one where she's a full-on insect, and the one where she like throws you down a hole. I mean, there's like a section where she will chase you, but that's not a boss fight. Yeah, and then there's that's the not one a where boss she's fight. transformed, right? And then there's the one where she throws you down a hole. 
and and Rosie she Dunno. yeah she gives you it's yeah that's the one where i got spooked the first time where she uh opens up the door and she's like uh, she goes well, you thought you could run away from me and she throws you down the hole Yeah, that's when you go across the water to the other side of the Oh, house. yeah, that's when she's just like regular and you just have to yeah. fight her off and then and she you knock off. her into like a pit, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you knock her into a pit and then like pretty quickly after that, I feel like you do the final boss fight with her, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty quickly yeah. after that. Um. So, yeah, you fight her in the pit. She kind of crawls off into this hole in the ground mm -hmm. and... You go upstairs, I believe, into the into the door. At least that's what I did, I think. I went You tried to like open a door, but it you realize that you need the lantern that Marguerite has to no, open that, was, that door. Yeah, so you go, that's another one. That's so you another go back one. down. I, I'm talking about the one where you go you, where you just go up and there's like the little the baby in a in a suitcase and stuff. I think that's after you kill her, because that's where you get the D series arm, I think. No. That's a no? that's the door after the lantern. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh but in this room when you go up, that's where Marguerite came from. There's this little shrine with a baby in a thing in a suitcase. It's kind of creepy and whatnot. And Zoe calls you and she talks to you again. Whatever. I don't know what she says. And then you have to crawl through the hole in the ground. To get to another part of the lake house. I think like a whole bunch of stuff happens in between, but it's mostly puzzles. Right. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about those. And you go to the second part of the house, of the lake house, um, where it's just kind of like It's a greenhouse. Yeah, it's a greenhouse. It's a greenhouse. So you go there. And that's where the second part of the Marguerite fight happens. Mm -hmm. she, she, she's got the big pregnant spider belly. Yeah, she's got the big pregnant spider belly and she spawns insects and she has this big disgusting butt and stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And she chases you. Yeah, she, ch she chases you and then you just have to fight her off, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after... After she, after you beat her, she turns into like I don't even know. It's not stone, is it? It's she like calcifies. Yeah, she calcifies, and that kind of lets you know. Okay, so she's dead for sure. Because when, when unless unless because when something calcifies, it doesn't. The game doesn't let them come back anymore. But you find that out later on when you you know find out Marguerite doesn't really. Doesn't come back. <laughs> so that's the end of Marguerite. That's the end of her arc. And you, what did you get out of that? Oh yeah, you got the lantern from her. You got the lantern. So mm -hmm. you go back up. You go to the door that needs the lantern. And it's kind of like this weird kid's bedroom with a couple holes and a couple of rooms. They have like a lot of money. Seriously. This entire mansion would be worth billions. The entire property uh but there's you know there's toys and stuff and at the end of it you go to this one room that has one bed and one toy house in the corner and in the toy house there's a little map that shows you the room and like a little secret hidden right there in the middle so you go to the middle of the of the wall and you see this dead body with with like candles and whatnot lit around it. And that's where you get the D series arm. That's when you pull it out. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I have to go peep real quick, but you can go on. <laughs> um okay. okay, I will go on. Um so after you get the D series arm, you then skedambles back to the trailer uh outside. And he's expecting to talk to Zoe, but Zoe is not there. Lucas calls calls you? I think he calls you on the phone. He's like, hey, what's up? I kidnapped Mia and Zoe. 
By the way, Mia's still alive. Um, come get him if you want him. So you have to go outside, uh, outside, and there's like a little gate, like right next to Zoe's trailer, that leads you into uh, Lucas's section of the game. And uh, you go through there, and there's like fucking rave music playing, and it's just like oops, 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 the whole time. Uh, not the whole time, but once you get to a certain point, it cuts that off, and you're kind of in like a very Saw-inspired setting where Lucas is like setting these traps for you that you have to watch out for, and he's trying to like fucking crush your head while you're putting in a little code for a door, stuff like that. Uh, and his entire section is kind of whoa, you're going crazy. Uh, it's kind of themed after that. And there are molded here as well, obviously, that you fight occasionally. And at one point, he kind of like drops you into a situation where you have to fight a bunch of molded. And that's like another test almost. And um, hello, right near the end. Hello. I am going back. crazy. I, I saw. I, I came back into the room and I think the camera saw me and it was like, holy shit. There she is. Spotted. <laughs> I was getting rats. Okay, wh 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 where are you? Um, at the Ethan or the Lucas part. Um, and eventually you get to a point where you do like a an escape room. But before you go into that escape room, you actually watch Clancy's perspective of going through the escape room. Uh, and in Clancy's perspective, no matter what you do. Clancy dies at the end, but through watching Clancy's tape, Ethan gains the knowledge of like how to go through the escape room without dying. So you solve that whole puzzle. It's kind of clever, very saw inspired again. Uh, and you get through, and Ethan uh, uses the bomb that was inside of a birthday cake to like blow open the wall or something. And behind that wall is where Lucas was, and he gives chase and whatnot. And I think you get the D series head at this point. Mm, yeah, I you think do. so. Zoe leaves it for you at, in the fridge. No. Yes. Does she? Yes. I thought you got it from here because you go to rescue Zoe and Mia from Lucas because he takes both of them. Yeah, but first, first she leaves it in the uh, fridge. You also need to go to the guy into the dissection room again because lucas tells you oh you have to do this and you put your arm down the the cop's neck remember and you have to pull out a key right i think that's the key you need to get into his little area maybe or something that's so you possible. definitely get the d-series head from from lucas's area because then you meet back up with zoe and you give her the arm and the head, and she uses it somehow to make the serum or whatever. <laughs> Magic. And then at that point, you have to choose if you're going to, well. No, that's your skill. At that point, you have to, well, yeah, because all the other shit isn't important. What? No, you fight um, Jack. Right, that's what I was just about to say. You oh. have two doses of the serum, but Jack comes back again. Um and you fight him for a bit, and he's like a big, really mutated version of himself. And once you beat him, um, you get like grabbed, and then Ethan ends up just stabbing Jack with one of the antidotes, essentially. Oh, I think you that's can, what the serum is. I think you can choose to stab him or not to stab him. What happens if no, you don't you can, stab you him? You can't. You can't. It's not a choice. That's not a choice. Um, Isn't there a choice no. to so use you, it? No. I, trust me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so you you stab him. Ethan stabs him with the the antidote, the serum, which like kills the mold basically. And Jack at this point is like all mold, so he just fucking dies, uh, and he calcifies off. And then at mm -hmm. that point, Mia and Zoe are standing there at this dock, and you are both all you know getting ready to leave, but they realize that you only have one serum left, and you have to choose between uh, giving it to Mia or giving it to Zoe. Um, and it lets you pick as a player. And the good end is technically to pick Mia. And 
it's also canon and then the bad end is to give it to zoe because she fucking just dies as soon as you like leave the area i hate mia i um i guess <laughs> zoe is probably also largely made out of mold which is why the serum maybe just fucking kills her no I don't know, the honestly. serum doesn't kill her the kid does Maybe. Yeah, I guess maybe Evelyn kills her. But that yeah, wouldn't make yeah, sense either. Because if you if you inject Zoe with the serum, then technically it should kill the mold inside of her and Evelyn shouldn't be able to just fucking calcify her. Mm, technically. But also, think, wouldn't it just calcify her immediately? Not after the kid is like, you can't leave. No, I think it's just like... Because, I mean, it's like the same thing that happened to Jack. It's just they're so much more infected with the mold, I think, that, like, you know. Okay, well, this is up for discussion, then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. that. I don't think they really make it clear why that happens. And yeah. since it's not the canon ending, I don't even think there is, like, a fucking explanation for it. Mm. Point is, um, you leave with whoever you give the serum to. Again, Zoe just fucking dies right away <laughs> if you give it to her. Mia... Uh, either way, you get attacked like pretty soon after leaving by uh, Evelyn, this like little girl. They talk a little um, bit that... about the lore, just a bit though, not like enough. They just who? Uh, Zoe or Mia? They talk about the boat because you're in the middle of a swampland. Right. More or there's less. like you're in a swamp, and there's like a tanker that crashed. Mm. And you're heading for that tanker, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, you get attacked by Evelyn, this little girl. I think you see her, like, a little bit before this, right? Like, when you get the arm. When you get the D-series arm and maybe another time. But, yeah. So she attacks the boat. Ethan fucking falls in the water. Mia falls in the water. And then when you... When you come back to gameplay you're playing as mia mm -hmm. you can also see that the tanker is literally right there when you get attacked. yeah it crashed like right in the bayou mm -hmm. and you're right at it yeah and ethan is and like I, how the fuck did as, this get here you're playing as flashback mia i think no you play as first no you play as normal mia but there are flashbacks in between and there's this one big flashback in the middle of this section really? mm -hmm. yeah so first you go into the like ruined boat you see how mm, it's all okay, fungus yeah, yeah. and whatnot um, puzzles. oh but you watch you end up watching a videotape yes of mia's old perspective mm -hmm. which is the flashback but you're right you do start as like current mia going through the boat and if you read all the stuff and take all the information in you find out that mia is a agent essentially working for at this point we don't know the name of the company you find that out later i think you find that out in like the dlc don't they um, work for corpse or what's it called? well she works for a corporation but you don't know the name of it oh um until you play the dlc oh, so at this point we don't know we just know like mia's working for some sketchy corporation <laughs> and her job along with some dude was to escort um evelyn to wherever um obviously that didn't go well <laughs> it fucking crashed and we find out that it crashed because evelyn was growing this sort of connection with mia and her surrogate father essentially um, who are told uh, and instructed to act like Evelyn's parents and, you know, not really fight her on that because otherwise she would, like, grow unstable. Mm -hmm. She has a very um, large obsession with family. Yeah. And I think at some point Mia gets kind of upset and tells Evelyn that she's not her mom or whatever, and that makes Evelyn angry, and she fucking crashes the whole ship. Uh, and that's why it <laughs> crashed in the bayou. Uh, but obviously, it's like a big revelation because A, Mia is not just some like fuck off nobody nanny that we thought she was. We thought she was just like babysitting this kid, but she's essentially working for some like shadow organization. She knows how to like fire a gun 
better than Ethan, arguably. Um, she's like a secret agent, basically. And that's kind of cool. Um, how does it switch back to Ethan? It does Do you save the... Ethan? Yeah, you save Ethan, but at the very end, she first goes through the entire boat. Ethan is the helpless dude. Right, you go through like is. the whole. Yeah, and Seventy's kind of a doof, and it's a yeah. miracle that he gets through it at all. I don't um, have high stone. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you save Ethan. He's like wrapped up in some fucking goo. Yeah, right? he's wrapped up in the and fungus. And she like tears him out of there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In the fungi mold, and then you free him. She gives Ethan this vial of Evelyn's DNA that you get at some point while you're running around on the ship. Well, um, she had it with her the whole time, I think. Ever since she got oh, to really? the yeah to the house, I think she okay. had it with her at the beginning of the mission. Like, if I think okay. she was instructed if anything went wrong to just like make her perish. I can kill her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Um, and then at this point, depending on who you picked. If you picked Zoe, uh, I think you fight Mia here. Yeah, you and, fight like, Mia. Kill her because Mia for is good. Yeah, because Mia is under the fungus inspection, so you have right. to fight. You have to fight her and kill her. But if you pick Mia, yeah. you don't have to. You said right. I don't know. Yeah, if you if you pick Mia, she is cured enough of the mold that she like fights off Evelyn's, you know, control and pushes Ethan out of the room that you would normally fight her in. And you don't have to fight her, and she's alive. Yeah. And then from there, I mean, it's pretty quick. You fucking zoop, zap, zip back to um, <laughs> the mansion, I think. Yeah, the mansion. Somehow, and... I don't know how you get back. I don't remember. I don't even... Oh, no, no, no. you go through the mine, which oh. eventually will take you back to the mansion. Yeah. Which is through that door I was talking about. Because that mine, mm -hmm. eventually, once you fucking go through all of that, is connected to that room that Mia thought there was a door in because there yeah. did used to be a door but there in the, next to the mine in the mine there's this like big laboratory and whatnot and that's where you find mm -hmm. out everything about evelyn and all right. like the whole experiment and whatnot mm -hmm. and because evelyn is an e-series bioweapon i don't know yeah. if e stands for evelyn or e stands I for I enormous the connection enormous series <laughs> uh but you find out yeah a lot of lore about like what evelyn is that she's this bioweapon that she's being sold uh, and you find out that lucas is actually um working with an outside like third party organization probably the same one that mia is working for later oh, I confirmed don't even that remember it is that. the same company he's like he's not he doesn't work for them but he's like working with them basically to feed them information on evelyn now that she's like stuck at this house oh because but lucas lucas, is... lucas wasn't infected was he right and i think I don't know if there's like confirmed information on this. I think the idea is that that company or even Lucas himself maybe like kind of cured himself or they provided him one so that he could continue to feed them information without being under Evelyn's control. But yeah, so he's like not really, he is infected to some degree because we see him transform at some point in the DLC, but I guess not enough to be fully under Evelyn's control and mm. to do the shit behind her back. But he's a genius. He's giving information to a company. That company is like, cool, that's <laughs> fucked up, but thanks for the information. Um, she's a bioweapon. We learned that they made her look like a little girl uh, because it'd be easy to like just kind of throw her into a country and let her infect people because who's going to like suspect that a little child is um, a bioweapon? And then the last like big twist we learn right before the final boss fight is that Evelyn and the E-Series as a whole is flawed and it's causing her to age rapidly. So the grandma we've seen the entire game is actually Evelyn who has aged, you know, to be grandma age in the three years since the initial uh, boat crash. And you fight her, she turns into like a big black wall that you just kind of shoot for a while. And then she turns into like a bigger black blob and uh, you fight her a little bit. And then we see these fucking helicopters come in and a gun gets thrown to you and someone goes fucking shoot her with this. And then you <laughs> shoot her. And, it's Albert. Uh, that's it. 
Yeah, it's, the gun is called the Albert. And it's loaded with ramrods, which is why it's so powerful. <laughs> and then she's fucking dead. Yep. And we find out the last thing of the entire game is we see that chopper like come down to the ground. It has the umbrella logo on it, but instead of red, it's blue. And we see Chris Hemsworth <laughs> from Resident Evil 1 and 2 and 3. Mm hmm. Um, we see him come out and he doesn't look like himself and then they corrected that in Resident Evil 8. He looks really odd, and doesn't he? He does. He doesn't look like Chris. He looks like Chris like enough that it's like, oh, I, I can recognize that's Chris and all the people who made a big stink about it I think are being a little silly. <laughs> but it doesn't look quite like him. By 8, they fixed it again. It's like, yeah, it looks just like him. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that's like the big kind of twist is like, oh, Chris is here, which makes you kind of question... Like, oh, is this really a full reboot? Does it still take... What is the sound? Why is there an Abe in my ear? Hi, <laughs> Thank you for the raid. Why can I hear Abe? <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's cool. It says... Meow, 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 meow. Follow meow, me. Meow, meow. <laughs> Did you notice? Uh, hope you I didn't a, hear the follow Hope me. you had a good time in your stream. Five and six yes, Chris yes. didn't quite look like Chris either. Five Chris looks like him. He's just really fucking jacked for no reason mm. and then six is like he looks pretty much like five but i feel like they toned him down a little bit <laughs> but it looks like him for the most part mm. i mean oh. definitely like when you look at resident evil one chris he looks very baby faced to there <laughs> for sure but i don't know from then on it's pretty consistent uh what the fuck were we talking about i don't know evelyn's dead yeah, Evelyn's dead, and we see Chris, and we see the umbrella. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, So you're kind of left to question whether, you know, this takes place in the same Resident Evil universe, and it's not really a reboot. Like, who... Is this really Chris? Is this, like, a fake Chris? Because he looks kind of wonky. Do we have... Is this, like, the first iteration know? of Umbrella? Yeah, we know now. Oh. But that's, like, that's like Resident Evil 8 spoilers, kind of. Oh. Oh, don't say, don't say that. Don't. No, I won't. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there's like a lot of questions up in the air and when Resident Evil 7 first came out, like right after you beat the game, it tells you, uh, like free DLC is coming. It's called Not a Hero and you play as Chris and mm -hmm. everyone was really excited and then it didn't come out and they're like, we're fucking delaying it. It's terrible. We're going to delay this. And everyone was like, okay. It was still kind of bad it came out, like, when it came out, no? No, it was fine when it came out. It's mm -hmm. just like when they delayed it, they're like, this is shit and we're not going to put it out like this so we're going to keep working on it stay tuned and it came out a while after the initial game came out and you play as chris and it's pretty like it's action based it's very action based you are i mean you're chris who is like this fucking special agent with years of experience of fighting bioweapons so I, I think it's supposed to feel like you're a lot more competent no oh. but you just run through the mines basically just fucking zip zapping molded left and right with your fucking machine gun <laughs> uh and not a lot happens until the very end you fight lucas and lucas transforms and you have like a big final boss fight against lucas and chris eventually blows his head off which isn't what he wanted to do he wanted to take him in alive so he could question him but he didn't get to no. and then i believe in that dlc is where we find out that the company or the organization that mia worked for and that lucas was working with is called the connections that's a dumb name it's kind of epic i'd call it scrumbos sro okay <laughs> so lucas was working with scrumbos sro and mia worked for scrumbos sro much better and then that's like the end of that mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. what i played i played the zoe Zoe DLC. Mm -hmm. I got the bad ending because I didn't see the number. And that's a prequel. That's a prequel to what happened. They seemed mm -hmm. like a very happy family before that whole thing happened, honestly. They well, seemed very nice. It was raining. It was very pleasant. Just hanging out, you know? Just yes. hanging out. And that whole thing happened. And Zoe was very confused, didn't know what was happening. And mm -hmm. in the real ending, she escapes the house. Mm -hmm. But. I Which is how she kind of like stays out in her trailer, I presume. 
Yeah, I, I wonder how they didn't really get there, you know? Like, they could just walk out there. I think but... they didn't really care. I think Evelyn doesn't really care for Zoe because she was gone for most mm -hmm. of the time, so she doesn't, like, form that attachment with her. Maybe. And maybe. then she's not as infected by the mold, I guess, so maybe Evelyn can't control her as much, which makes sense. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, and then I played the poker game, the 21, but that crashed. Was, game, yeah, yeah, so I don't know I don't know what happens at the end of that one. It's not really anything. All of a lot of the DLC is you playing as Clancy and you learn that Clancy basically got fucked with multiple times mm. and like survived each time and then obviously you see him finally die in the in the regular game. Poor Clancy. Yeah. That's sad. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of sad. Mm. They're both generic but, names? You know. Yeah, kind of. They are. They are, yeah. <laughs> so that's more or less like, that's more or less the entire game. Right. More that's less. Resident Evil 7. So you said you like Resident Evil 7. Yes. All right. If you had to give it a rating, oh, a number rating. On a, oof, on a game scale? Oh my. <laughs> no, on a movie scale. If on you had to rate scale? it as a movie. Movie scale, 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> movie scale. No, uh, game scale. Damn. Um, 7.5 out of 10. Resident Evil 7 out of 10. <laughs> Resident Evil 7 out of 10. But only because the tension made my head hurt. And I know that's not necessarily the game's fault. But it was also unpleasant to play. That's why I only give it 7.5. I think it was really good. I do think there are some plot holes and some things that I would rather see explored than the stuff that we got. What plot holes? Well, for example, the Zoe thing, right? Like, what is, what's going on there when she dies? Well, her dying is not canon. Right, so. well, it's not canon, but it, there still should be an explanation even if it's not canon. There is, in the DLC. No. Yeah, and the end of Zoe DLC, you didn't play it. Why does she call so Sophie? One... Because she's got the fucking mold in her. She's right, dying. but that's what I'm saying. It wasn't explained in, at that moment. There's another canon explanation for her dying, right? I don't care for that. I'm talking about this non-canon one. She still have. Well, because you're not supposed to pick it. Well, that, I picked it. That's their fault for putting it. There. Well, because she's fucking dying. I don't Which makes sense when Zoe's you play the DLC better. and it explains it. Zoe's better than me. I got, I'm got. i saying in, it. In the DLC, no. you learn that even if you don't give her the shot, that Zoe is dying anyway. Yeah. That's sad. Well, you're not going to play the DLC. She is alive at the end of everything anyway. She gets saved by Joe Baker. Oh my god, jo who the fuck is Joe Mama? That's Jack's brother. Oh. He's like a swamp man, and you play <laughs> that whole DLC and eventually save Zoe. Mm. And then, if you bought the deluxe edition of Resident Evil 8, right? They give you an 80 page <laughs> report about Resident Evil 7. Oh it has God. like some information and fills in some gaps and just kind of sets up uh, Resident Evil 8 as well as kind of like you know covers all of seven and it turns out that zoe wrote the report so we know that zoe is like alive and safe and got away from all that for sure good for her yeah okay well still i wish they would have more focused on um uh, on like oh god exp I guess exploring the fungus, it, it sounds kind of weird, but I, I was ex I was really into the lore the entire time I played, but for most of the game, you don't actually get anything. It's You don't get much. That's pretty common in Resident Evil. Yeah, game. no, I understand that, but as someone who yeah. really likes the lore of a game, I know that doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like it when I, because when I play a game on stream, I actually skip everything, but when I play alone, I, I read everything. Uh, so, I, <laughs> I would really 
would have liked to see more of it during the entire game instead of everything at the end. So I could piece it together myself instead of just being spoon fed at the end, you know? Right. Yeah. 10.5. 10 10.5 10 out of Resident Evil. <laughs> what about you? What rating? Um, I don't know. It's tough because Resident Evil 7 is probably one of my least replayed Resident Evils. I I like playing through them multiple times after I beat them, and that's pretty common with Resident Evil as a whole, and uh, trying to see like how low you can get your time and all that. But I just don't really like replaying Resident Evil 7 at all. But I like the game. Um, 8 out of 10. Okay. Out of 5. Out of 5. <laughs> Pretty it's okay. good. But I mean, already I've replayed Resident Evil 8 more times than I've replayed Resident Evil 7. Didn't you just beat Resident Evil 8? Yeah, and I've already beaten it four more times. What? When did you do this? Uh, just here and there. I mean, I've gotten it down to the point where my runs are like two hours long. So... Oh. Not that bad. Is it that fast to get through it? How fast is it to get through Resident Evil 7? I mean, if you know exactly what you're doing and you don't do any like extra, you don't grab any treasures or go for any of the upgrades or whatever, you know, you can get through it pretty quick. Because mm. okay. I mean, like reliably, I'm getting like two hours and some change on my Resident Evil 8 runs now. Oh my God. Are you putting it on speedrun.com? No, because the world records are like an hour 32, hour 28, not, stuff like that. That's not that far off. Yeah, but in speedrunning it is. For me to have to knock off another like 30 minutes, is that's a lot of time. Because I already feel like I'm going pretty fast. <laughs> oh god, okay. What score would you give to the ladies and the MC? Minecraft, 10 out of 10. Ladies? What ladies? 10 out of 10. Zoe and Mia? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Zoe looks kind of. <laughs> Zoe looks like she uses a lot of drugs. Yeah, Zoe looks like a meth addict, but she's been through yeah, a she lot. So. Look too good. Yeah, you know. Uh, Zoe. I... Uh, I don't know. Four out of ten. Mia. Two out of ten. I don't understand your hate for Mia. Mia's a bitch. She doesn't tell you anything. The number one thing in a relationship is communication. She goes MIA. <laughs> she goes Mia for three years. Come on. I mean, she didn't. She didn't do that willingly. <laughs> she got kidnapped. Yeah, but like, could have sent a text, right? I don't think so. Because <laughs> I mean, you have to remember that she's not the one who sends the letter to Ethan either. I guess. Or it's it's an email. She's not the one that sends the email. Oh yeah, it is an email. Evelyn does that, right? Hi, Rosen. Evelyn, or she compels Mia to do it, or Lucas oh does it. Someone okay, does it, Mia, you know? I compel you to write an email right now. I swear to fucking. <laughs> I mean, she can fully control her, so. Yeah, but it's funny to me. But the point is, Mia doesn't like. She didn't really do anything i mean yeah you can argue that like maybe she shouldn't have kept it a secret to begin with no, that she, she was shouldn't. with working for the connections but also uh it's an organization called the connections so maybe they fucking kill ethan if you tell him so maybe not good to do that maybe i don't know her circumstance but she's kind of a cunt to me so i say she's a cunt she didn't do anything though. yeah well doing nothing isn't good either is it <laughs> the main character? Right, well, I don't know. The main character is pretty lame, too. Four Ethan out of ten. is. Ethan's like really just very nothing in Seven. Yeah. He doesn't really have much of a personality, kind of on purpose. Like. Self insert? He doesn't talk that much. He talks a little bit, but. Not a lot. In Eight, he talks a lot. <laughs> Thin eyes? Ethan. <laughs> Thin eyes. Thin eyes. You got really like thin eyes like that. <laughs> Mia, this is you right now. Mia? I thought Mia was Asian the entire time. She's very white. Yeah, well, she looks very white in 8, but she looks... To me, she looked really Asian She in looks seven. a little odd in the opening cutscene. Yeah. She looks a little weird. Are you telling... You can't... Okay. Yes. What? 
Nothing. She does look odd. Yeah, she looks weird in, in the opening to Seven. And then they're like, we gotta fix this. She looks fucked up. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> Alright, are you ready? Put, mm hmm. <laughs> Alright, it's time for real Digimon or fake Digimon. They're all fake. They're all Just... fake this time. None of them right, are real. Well, you, gotta, you gotta let me read them first. Okay. Okay. Um, so your score from last time, you're 2-1. Two, two correct guesses, one uh, incorrect guess. Mm -hmm. Educated um, guesses. Right, right, right. So I have three Digimon here. They could be real, they could be fake. I'll give you their name, I'll give you a little description, and then you tell me if they're real or fake, right? Okay. Okay. So the first one is Chumon. How do you Chu how do you Mon. spell that? C H U U M O N. Okay. Chumon. He's a bald rat. He's pink. <laughs> he has a very funny toothy smile. <laughs> And he has little hairy ears, and he has crazy eyes. <laughs> he's a pink bald rat. Okay. Um, well, Chu isn't Chu a a mouse in Japanese? I don't know. Because Pikachu, Pika is Sparkle, and Chu is mouse. Sparkle mouse. I don't know. Okay, I'll I'll say this is real because I don't know if you would spoof me twice in a row, but maybe you would. I'll say he's real. Real? Okay. Yeah. The next one is let me pull him up. Target Mon. <laughs> like the store. <laughs> he is a pink chimp with a futuristic <laughs> visor on. Okay. He has a pair of Air Jordans on his hands <laughs> and regular monkey feet. And he has a belt on. <laughs> are they actually Air Jordans or are they just sneakers? They look like Air Jordans. They look like... What year is this Digimon from? Uh, 2011. <laughs> he's, he's not real. Not real? He's not Target real. Mon? No, I don't think you would know right. their year off of the top of your head. Okay. <laughs> Next Digimon is Nanimon. Nanimon? Hi, Doodle. Nanimon, okay. Nanimon. He is a... Uh, he <laughs> is a skin-colored man. He is a round ball. He has four limbs that come off of this ball. He has no body. He's just round. <laughs> He's wearing cool black shades and he's wearing wrestling boots and his legs are fucking thick they're built so are his arms to be fair and he has um hairy armpits and a cool mustache beard combo god he sounds real too i don't know what so can you can you give me a rundown of the digimon one more time okay picture a round ball right okay. like a kirby ball yeah but it's skin colored okay Okay, he has bushy eyebrows and like a mustache and beard and a human mouth. I've 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 seen this Digimon. Okay, I've and seen he has him the black... before. Uh huh. He looks like a normal he's guy, real? but he's but he's he doesn't have four arms though. But the one that I'm thinking of has two arms. He has this one has two arms, but he okay. also has legs. He's got, yeah, he's real. I know yeah, him. Really, he's real. Yeah, not you know him. Well, that's yeah, cheating. I know him. You can't know him. <laughs> Sorry, you picked so you're, this one's disqualified. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get a different Digimon. Okay, well, well, I already know that this one's real though, so the next pick has got okay, to be well real, then, right? All right, well, I'm just gonna pick a different one. Okay, all right, stretch. How do you do a stretch? I go up. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think I, like I sent Nanimon to you one time. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. I think Kuro Kuro destroyed it. Kuro did. Um. Wait, but if this one is real, then one of the other ones has to got to be fake. Oh god. There was Chumon. 
What was the other one? Target Mon? Target Mon. What was Target Mon again? The chimp with the Air Jordans on his hand? Yeah, okay. I, I'm going to say that one's fake. Okay, I'm going to replace... Um, since you already know Nani Mon, that's cheating. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say it's disqualified. Uh, this one is called Peter Mon. <laughs> so Peter Mon is a man. He's just a regular guy. But he's got... He's wearing all green, like Peter Pan. He has a little fancy hat with a feather in it. Okay. And a sword, like Peter Pan has when he fights Captain Hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's blonde. Okay. He has white gloves on. All right. Long hair. Peter Mon. I don't think he's real. You don't think Peter Mon I don't is think, real? I don't think Peter Mon exists, no. Okay, are you ready for the results? Yes. Chumon is real. He okay. is a bald pink rat. Okay. You can put him on the screen if you want. All right, I'll try to find him. He's the only one. The rats don't need to go on screen. Okay. He is a bald pink rat associated with um, Sukumon, the poop Digimon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's very funny. Mm -hmm. um, Targetmon, the, ch the pink chimp with the futuristic sci-fi visor and Air Jordans on his hands. Yeah. Is a real Digimon. <laughs> you said he was fake. Well, I thought I thought he was real at first, but then you gave me three real Digimon, so he threw me off the track. I thought Blood okay. of Hat always had got to be fake. <laughs> Hi, no, Panda. You gotta stay on your toes, you never know. No, cause I never know. Nanimon, you were disqualified from. No one gets points for that one. Uh, Petermon is also real. Oh he just looks god. like Link from Legend of Zelda. Oh my god. So, uh, you know. One, one for, one for three. <laughs> there, there he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> There's Chumon. There's Chumon. I gotta put Jack away. Yeah, you gotta put Jack away. It's Did time for Jack, Jack to go home. It's time to... Yeah. Okay, well, there's Chumon. Um, I, I guess I guess they can all be fake or they can all be real. I they thought, can all be fake I or thought, they can all be real. Damn, I thought maybe... I thought they, at least one had to be fake. No. Yeah, okay. But that puts your final score at 3-2 for real or fake Digimon. Pretty good. Oh, hi, Baldrat. <laughs> Why does Bebop Digital have a brain rat. on his side of the desk? Because we talked about Resident Evil. Mm. Yeah. What was your uh, favorite part it, of Resident Evil? Seven? Yeah. You can go into the other ones except for eight. Unless it's something that's oh, not spoiled. Any Resident Evil? Uh sure, but I would like to hear about seven the most. Um I don't know, that brings it back to what I was saying about how Seven is like the least enjoyable for me to replay besides six, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I feel like every time I get to a new part in seven, I'm like, oh no, this part. Like, I'm, I know I'm not going to have fun doing the next part, even though I had fun the first time I played it. Mm. So it's kind of hard to reflect on it now. I like, I like, I mean, I like Lucas's section. I thought that was cool. It was really new to to Resident Evil to do something like that and to have like a a sense of horror that is like so personal and like about self preservation when you're like doing the puzzle for uh, the little clown birthday cake thing. I mean, up until this point, there was nothing in Resident Evil like that, so that was cool. Mm hmm. That's the only thing yeah, out of the entire that's... game. I mean. I, that's what, it's so complicated. I don't hate the game. Obviously, I like it, but there's no other part where I can recall and be like, yeah, that was really cool. And you gave it an 8? Yeah. From the first time I played through it, that game is an 8. If I had oh. to like take into account like how I feel about it to replay it, mm -hmm. yeah, probably lower. Oh, okay. It's not like a very fun game to replay. Okay, but, that's fair. You know. mm -hmm. What's your favorite? Um, my favorite part... Um, well, I know that I said it wasn't 
very good but i did actually enjoy the tension if, if if my head didn't hurt if my head didn't hurt from the tension uh and i've noticed this my head hurts when i'm under like a large amount of stress so i guess the game stressed me out a lot more than i thought uh but i did enjoy the tension of the game quite a lot because i don't think uh, i don't think games do that all that well a lot of the time yeah mm -hmm. yeah so I liked that, and I liked like putting together the lore, but as I said, it kind of got spoon-fed at the very end, so you couldn't do mm -hmm. a lot of that. But I spent like weeks thinking about it, like avoiding spoilers and shit, but it just kind of... I don't know. I just wish they had done that different. Yeah. But I still like That's it. kind of just a flaw of, of Resident Evil, though. Mm. It's basically always like the beginning is just you kind of seeing all this crazy shit and just figuring out how to survive it and then by the end you end up in a lab and you read all these like lore dumps basically yeah save for like seven is definitely really light on like tiny breadcrumbs that resident evil will drop like in one you'll find a lot more documents from just like a huge assortment of people that like lived in this location or whatever they give you kind of hints about what's kind of going on. Seven is definitely light on that because the only people really in the fucking Baker house are the Bakers. So most of the documents you find are written by them. And it's a little less interesting. But there, I mean, like the one you find in, um, maybe it's in grandma's room or maybe it's in Marguerite's room or something, but you find like the one about how they're going to the doctor. Yeah, it was Marguerite, and... I believe. Right. So like Marguerite is going to the doctor. I feel like that's kind of like a, you know, a little bit of lore that you can try to piece together early on. A little bit. But I don't think it's enough. Yeah, I don't know if it's enough by itself. Like I said, seven feels pretty light on that whole category as a whole. But I don't know. Maybe you'll play Resident Evil 1 someday. <laughs> I've seen you play. I don't need to play it. Yeah, but do you remember all the documents and stuff? No, I slept through that's a like good the amount best part. of it. I know, but that's like the best part of Resident Evil is like reading all the documents. <laughs> I guess so. You can just tell me about it. I don't know. I I don't like third person shooters very much. Well, Resident Evil One is not a third person shooter. Yes. It it's like a fixed camera shooting game. Oh, even worse. Yeah, I don't know if you like it very much. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But. There's a lot of really cool lore in one and also two and three doesn't really do a lot to contribute to the lore of either of those honestly but there's really cool lore uh just throughout the resident evil franchise as a whole and some of it is like you have to read some obscure manga and then some of it is in like an animated movie from 2007 <laughs> and another one is like in this short pamphlet that came out as like a pre-order digital deluxe edition for Resident Evil 5 or something. It's kind of lame. And it's cool to like piece together these timelines and stuff. It's cool. Maybe, but that, I don't know, that just kind of leaves all the non-hardcore fans out of the loop, I guess. No, because you can go and learn it. You don't even have to necessarily play the games to learn all the stuff. Yeah, but it's kind of like Marvel, isn't it? That you have mm. all of this lore shit and the average but, fan does but the really. lore the lore is kind of like the reward for playing all the games you know like you're not you can play resident evil 7 and 8 and not really miss out on anything you know mm. they're not really dropping these huge parts of the lore in either of those games where it's like you have no clue what's going on because you didn't play the previous games you still get this complete experience with this full story it's just there are like little bits and nods and connections towards previous games that like expand the universe okay it's like in 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 seven when you find that paper in the attic and it says that um trevor george built like the um puzzle mechanisms in the baker mansion mm -hmm. that just expands the universe because he's also the person who built the spencer mansion from Resident Evil 1. Right, okay, so if it's not anything important, that's fine. Right, it's just like usually little things like that that other games will have. Okay. Okay. So, how would you compare 7 and 8 in terms of lore? Again, without, you know, spoiling anything. Yeah, 
Um, the thing is, and this isn't a spoiler, okay. but 7 and 8 are very connected, like more than any other Resident Evil game ever. Well, it's not I'm common figured. for... Yeah, yeah, obviously, but it's not common for Resident Evil games to like be that linked it's always like you kind of have to find the strands that connect each game and piece them together and be like oh okay so like that's what happened from the last game until this one and like that's why this is happening now that's where this character is at this point in time whatever whatever but i mean seven and eight is like it's not a direct continuation obviously because a three-year time gap happens but it's so like if you didn't play seven eight feels very strange i think because there's a lot you don't know and the lore later on into eight is so reliant on your knowledge of seven and they don't really even like tell you much which i guess maybe that's what the like 80 page lore dump is for if you get the <laughs> deluxe edition but i don't know i mean the lore is pretty good in eight i think and it has really cool connections and really cool story beats that it all kind of link back and it does eventually have a connection like a really small one to like the original resident evil which again is just one of those cool things where you're like oh hey i know who those characters are yeah um seven's definitely on the weaker side it just feels like what happens is not very important or integral to like the resident evil universe like a lot of the other things are in other games mm -hmm. but by the time you get to eight it makes Seven's plot feel bigger, I guess, and more important. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, in term, in terms of you know, you said you didn't like replaying Seven that much. What makes you want to replay the other ones, or what makes it more fun to replay the other Resident Evil games in comparison to Seven? Um. It's different for each Resident Evil game because for like Resident Evil 1 and 2, it's just kind of like learning, learning the knowledge of each game. And because it's fixed camera, you can go like so fast because you just have to know like when to hold down certain inputs and like, okay, I need to put in this direction as I move through this hallway and that'll let me just run straight past this zombie or whatever. So just kind of like learning where all the items are and like the optimal optimal route to get from one thing to the next is really fun. Um, so that's kind of like my draw towards one, two and three, because those are all, you know, similar in style. It's just getting better at it as like a speed game. And then you get to four and five and that's like completely gone. But it's like fun to like you can upgrade your guns and stuff similar to how you can again in eight. You can like you know, mm -hmm. upgrade this handgun or get this new handgun that's stronger than that one and upgrade it. And it has like different properties. And that's kind of fun is like go through and find treasures and upgrade your guns and try out different ones and blah, blah, blah. Plus they're like, they're fun enough on their own. You know, all of the Resident Evils are. Six is a travesty. <laughs> um, and then seven, it just feels like it kind of lacks a lot of that. Like you can't go that fast. Ethan is just kind of slow. Mm. Um, there's like a lot of cutscene interruptions and you can skip them, but it's like, it's just a lot of fucking knowing like, okay, I need to get ready to skip this. Okay, hit escape, click skip or press F to skip or whatever, which it happens in eight as well. But I don't know, eight is also just more fun to play. It also has like upgrading weapons like four. So there's that element. Um, well, eight is more action based. You said. Yeah, that too. So it also feels faster in, in the sense that it's not like, oh, I need to do this required stealth section. Like, you know, I don't want to play through this game four times and have to do these stealth sections where I just like wait for Marguerite to go down the hall or I wait for Jack to like go into another room. It, shit like that just really slows it down and makes it not very fun. Yeah. Oh. But once you finish eight, we can talk about that <laughs> and why it's fun to replay. Yeah, we'll do eight whenever I finish it. That'll take a couple weeks if I do one session a week. I'm thinking of doing more, honestly. Uh, but you know, I'm already doing like Breath of Breath of the Wild and Exodus, and that. Yeah. And I am. I was thinking of doing more ASMR too, because I think ASMR could be uh -huh. pretty nice. 
uh, especially mm -hmm. since you know I like ASMR, so why not you know oh. help other people with that? Um, oh, but what what do you think of Resident Evil Eight so far, though? I've... I know you're only like <laughs> an hour and some change in, but yeah, I only just got into the mansion. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm like really slow playing FPS games. I think that's fine. But like, what's your initial impression? Just like right off from what you have mm. played, how are you feeling? How do you compare it to Seven? Well, I am very, I, you could probably tell, but I'm very excited about it being in Europe. <laughs> as a, you know, as a European myself, I, I see all of those things and I go, oh, I know that. And it makes me <laughs> happy because I like, I don't really see a representation yeah. of old timey Europe. Uh, which is yeah, where, especially you know, in that much detail, in that much detail, exactly. And I know it's in uh, Romania, but a lot of it, I think, is just across Eastern like, European, Eastern general. European thing. And although I am Central Europe, technically, we are more, you know, we're still kind of people confuse that. For, all your culture and stuff comes yeah, from all of our culture yeah. comes from Eastern Europe. So that's really nice. I like that aspect. I think that's like my favorite part because it, it is really well modeled. It, it, they clearly re researched it very well because um, it's basically exactly like the places where I grew up and like, mm -hmm. you know, like going off to villages and just hanging out on farms and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that makes me very happy. And all the like old timey tiles and and um, pots and stuff. That's very nice. What I don't like, though, is how action packed it is. As I said, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a huge fan of uh, action stuff in horror games. I think it's more about the tension mm -hmm. and being scared. Uh, and when you put action in there, it's it's in your hands, you know? It's in your hands, so you don't have to yeah. worry. I think the biggest part of horror is everything being out of your control. But when you, you know, when you just put a bunch of monsters and you shoot them, it, you can just kind of do that. To be fair, that's kind of... That's almost like closer to the original genre that resident evil created in survival horror you know it's not just horror it's not supposed to be creepy it's supposed to be scary because you don't know oh am i gonna have enough ammo to kill this thing that's like fucking running at me with a pickaxe oh do i have enough healing items you know to no, get I through this next part i don't blame the part for doing uh, i don't play the game for doing that uh right i no, think no, it's I just for a different you know type mm -hmm. of people just not for yeah. me so it's just a right, personal opinion. Sure. I think other people can have a lot more fun with it <laughs> than I do. Yeah. Just because I I'm think not seven a huge... just had mm -hmm. I think seven just had such a big focus on it just being scary in general. You know, it's like super dark, like the whole yeah. game. Um it the first person thing was like new, like I said. There was like a a way to play it in VR if you played it on PlayStation. I think they were just super focused on making a game that was just scary whereas this is more like a return to form kind of similar to resident evil 4 which was like the first game back then to jump towards like a more action perspective while still having survival horror elements and i think it's more of a return to that whereas one kind of harkens kind of close to like resident evil 1 and 2 but still even more horror centric than that mm -hmm. if that makes sense no, I, I understand. Again, it's just, I, I prefer the tension to the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so excited about the outside sink. Dude, you don't even know. Outside, outside sinks are such a thing here, or were, I guess. You can still see them in some, like, old-timey villages, but... Such a thing, bro. I don't know if... I don't know if it's, like, all over the place, but... They're not. I mean, I it's up. like a farm thing <laughs> in America, but I feel yeah. like they're probably way more common there back in the day. Like a normal house would have it, right? Some, some did. Yeah, outside sink. Yeah, that was really cool. I don't think they would put outside sink in the game. <laughs> outside sink, in Bro, Smash Brothers. Oh my god, they put Bro. outside sink on in Smash Bros. They put fucking outside sink. <laughs> the last character in Smash. Yeah. But the the voice acting so far is pretty good. I like that, and I like the uh, I like the um, character design. I really like uh, Mama Mar Maria. What's her name? Mother Miranda. Mother Miranda. Yeah, uh, she's an angel, right? So yeah, she's like a seraphine. Yeah. Esque. 
Yeah, you can tell because of her wings and the like the halo mm -hmm. eye thing, whatever that is. Imagery in general yeah. is very angelic esque. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that's really cool that they went for although they humanized her, they they did go for the biblical um they they did go for the biblical uh representation of angels as well. They mm -hmm. kind of mixed it together, which I liked a lot. And there's Heisenberg. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry to interrupt you, but Crow asked a while ago if you can get all the important lore by only playing the games. Yes, you can get all the main lore, like everything you really actually need to know besides like little tidbits. Everything you're going to get from like outside movies and shit is really not that important. I mean, you could technically even say that about the games. Like no Resident Evil game has come out and been like, hey, do you remember that event from 1998 where we were in Arclay? And it's like, <laughs> what? No, I don't know what you're talking about. The games never do that. The games aren't ever like, well, you better remember it or you're screwed. Um, so you can technically skip all kinds of games and still kind of understand what's going on. It's just to have like this complete, absolutely like perfect understanding. There's a lot of stuff you do have to consume if you want to understand every little piece and like who every little minor character is. Like what if you want to know what happened to the architect who built the spencer mansion from the first resident evil and did the puzzle work for resident evil 7 like if you want to know why he disappeared you have to read some like obscure thing to figure it out um but you can get most of the stuff you need from just playing the games hmm. that's it good <laughs> that's the way it should be i don't even know what i was talking about um you're talking about the the main bad guys from a you were talking about heisenberg next oh yeah heisenberg he seems he seems kind of basic but i like that he's got metal powers or magnetic mm -hmm. powers cool accent. whatever he's what he has a cool accent does he you hear it a lot more later yeah oh you don't really hear it as much when you first see him but later on it's very prevalent oh i didn't he even... calls mother miranda mother miranda hello mother miranda mother miranda <laughs> is he southern i don't know I don't know what the accent is supposed to be. Okay. And then there's the little child, like the little bride thing, right? The little doll, yeah. Yeah, the doll. That one's kind of neat. And then I really like the vampire sisters. I know you killed them, but they're neat. Mm -hmm. Now, the next time you play 8, look in Ethan's journal. You He's can, like, got a press journal? Start. Yeah, he has a journal, and he makes drawings in there that are very good. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> If you look in there, he has a page where he describes the four main bad guys. Ooh, okay. It's kind of cool. Four main Do you remember the other, guys. the last bad guy? I thought that it was it. Mother Miranda, the doll, the Heisenberg, Lady Dimitrescu. There's one more. You see him like very, very briefly in the beginning. Oh, the Mrazik? <laughs> the what? Mrazik? The one with the big club and he's like all... He's got no, a big beard. No. Is that just like a mini boss no. kind of thing? That, yeah, it's just like a boss at some point later. Okay, well, um, let me think. No, no, I don't think I remember. He's like a hunchback looking guy. Oh, he was there very briefly. Yeah, like he shows up like briefly. the shortest of everyone probably. Yeah, he was just there at the very beginning when you woke up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't remember. He, Ethan remember. does write about him in the journal, though, which is oh. odd because I don't know how he actually knows who the fuck he is. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? All right, I'll read that. I'll read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that those are those are my thoughts so far. I like the uh, Rococo esque architecture on the inside. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's actually Rococo, but it looks like it to me. Of the mansion mm -hmm. or of the castle, really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what type of architecture that's supposed to be? I have no fucking clue. No. I thought it was gothic. Um, I would have to see the ceiling and the outside. <laughs> Can you look it up? I'm kind of I mean, interested. The outside is very gothic. Is it? I don't remember. Uh... Can you show me a little picture? I don't want to look for anything Resident Evil 8 because I know even in pictures there will be... There will um, be the spoilers. outside is so gothic. Hold is on. it? Can I see? I don't remember. Yeah, I'm sending it. Might be. Does it have pointed arcs? <laughs> yes. It has a ton of like pointy spires and shit. Yeah, but I need to see the arcs though. Oh, it's so dark. That's I can't gothic, see anything. Bro. bro. 
I don't know. It That's doesn't... gothic. Well, the thing is, I don't see... Oh, no, there they are. Yes, that is gothic. I see one. There's one that I can see on the entire picture. But there's also, like, ones that aren't pointed, mm. which would point to Romanesque, but... I see the one pointed, right, I'll read you. so... I'll read you what it says on the wiki, okay? Yes, please, because I have no clue. It, I think the overall structure would be of the correct. estate dates back to the European Middle Ages and largely conforms to architectural concepts derived during its High Renaissance period, okay. crafted from stratified limestone comprising the turrets and the battlements which adorn the castle's fog and shroud towers and snowy balustrades. The interior or ornamentals of the castle adopt a more heavily Baroque style, which came into prominence during the 17th century, and suggests the castle may have been updated during that time. So it seems like the outside is high renaissance. And yeah, which is gothic. Is Baroque. Which is gothic right. mostly. And then the, and inside, is the Baroque, inside is Baroque. Which, yeah, which the height of is Rococo. Hmm. Okay. So we got there eventually in the end. We got it. We can it. count we that as our art appreciation, <laughs> art appreciation for this one. Art appreciation stream. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Where's Shrek? Oh. God. Very. Have you seen him? No, know, not not today. I thought I saw him earlier, but I don't. I'm not seeing him now. Oh wait, I. Oh. Oh. Is that? I don't. Is that him? I don't. I don't see him. Where? Is that him? There's a bear. There's a polar bear there. Oh. Is he? There he is. There he is. Oh, there he is. There he is. There's Shrek. Okay, well, there... Okay. Okay, well... There he is. I'm glad that we know where he is. All right, at least he's there. All right. All right, we found him. Okay, thank you, Shrek. All right, see you later, Shrek. You don't get lost again, Shrek. You don't want to have to... <laughs> hmm? Who said that about Shrek? <laughs> Who said that, girl? Girl? Why is he naked? We don't know. He's just chilling. All right, he's his own guy. Yeah. We just wanted to make sure he wasn't lost. Yeah, we just want to make sure he's okay. We got to check up on him every once in a while. You got to check up on him every once in a while. He will get lost. He will get lost. See. I mean... But we found him. He's a bit old, you know. He's getting up there, definitely yeah. in years. So it's it's good that we found him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy that we did. Yeah. I'm glad he's okay. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> He's a green, ugly spot in the white snow. That's a fact? <laughs> That's not a fact. He's beautiful. You're mean. You're mean. You are mean. He's beautiful. Yeah, he is very beautiful. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um, No, I'm, I think we kind of got over the whole Resident Evil thing pretty well. Hmm. And, uh, can I talk about can I talk about Fear Factor? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what Fear Factor is? I don't remember. I know we talked about it. <laughs> okay. Fear Factor is a show from the early. Oh, that 2000s? you mean like actual Fear Factor? Yes, you can talk about. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give the me TV pictures show. though. Mm -hmm. I okay, do know. so it's a TV show from the early two thousands to like the mid two thousands, I think, or maybe it was started in the mid two thousands. I don't remember. Joe Rogan was the host at the time. Um, and basically, they have six contestants and they do three stunts every episode. And the stunts are usually like, typically, the first one is like some kind of physical thing. And whoever has like the fastest time advances and two people get eliminated. Um, the second one is like pretty frequently like uh, you have to stick your head in this barrel of snakes and fish out a rat. Or you have to put your head inside this cage with these cockroaches and scorpions for three minutes or whatever. And then the last one is the final two people. And it's usually some like big, like Hollywood-esque stunt where they either climb across the side of like a truck using little screwed in handholds and the truck is going 40 miles an hour and whoever gets up there the fastest wins. Or they have to do some like obstacle course on high rise beams or something, mm -hmm. you know, something that requires some skill or technique or finesse, right? Yeah. But 
last night as I'm drifting off to sleep, I'm watching Fear Factor and the final challenge is just that they have to drive a car off of a parking garage okay. and whoever goes the furthest wins. What? And they can only drive in a straight line. They line the car up for them. There's no technique here. You just press the fucking gas. Is this a new uh, they season? They have protection. They have protection below them. It's not like they're crashing into the fucking ground. Right. They're, there's like stuff to catch them. But it just really stuck with me that that was the final challenge. What the fuck is the... Where's the skill? Yeah, no, that's nothing. <laughs> You just hold down the gas pedal and you go, God, I hope my car goes really far. Do you think it's because of lawsuits? Do I think that's because of lawsuits? No, because that's only the like second episode of season two. And then they had three more seasons. Oh, hmm. So I, if whoever came up with that one, I think got fired because <laughs> it was such a fucking shitty challenge. That is a really shitty challenge. Uh, and the best part of it all is there's a guy with frosted tips hairstyle you know oh my god yes and and joe asked him how far do you think you're gonna go and he goes hey, hey, 69 <laughs> <laughs> did he and then he did he go and he lost nice. no he went 68 i believe or 67 and he oh. fucking lost he got the least distance out of all of them that's so sad <laughs> 69 <Yeah. laughs> that just really stuck with me and i thought that was a terrible challenge it doesn't make any fucking sense no, that's really dumb. I remember when they were climbing into that helicopter out of a scooter or something. Yeah, the shit like that is what the challenge should be. Because yeah. there's a lot of, like, variants. Like, oh, if you're very athletic or you have a certain, like, you're very technical, whatever, you can do better at this challenge. But this one is get into the car. We'll put little splints on your legs so your legs don't snap when you land. And then you just press down the gas pedal. <laughs> and that's it. And then you hope. You hope for the best. You hope you get higher than 69. <laughs> yeah, I... I wonder why they did that. Have you looked for an explanation of any sort? I was too tired at the time, and I forgot about it until just, like, right now, basically. <laughs> I don't know if anyone is going to talk about it, because it's like... I guess it's relatively normal. It just stuck out to me as so stupid compared to mm. the typical challenge. I still, I still remember this one episode of Fear Factor where they had to like move dead rats with their mouth only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember thinking when I was a kid when I saw it. I remember thinking, "Wow, that's not okay." <laughs> yeah, I think there's an episode where they make a guy just drink a bunch of bull cum, <laughs> and it's one of the episodes where they have. There are like twin siblings with them. Hmm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a cool show. It is a cool show. I liked watching it a lot as a as a kid with my brothers. I also yeah. remember this one um this one episode where they were eating pizza, but the pizza was made with like the most disgusting ingredients they could find. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like chasing rat poop on here. Because popcorn mm. pooped right under me. Popcorn, you are such a poopy boy. Do you know that? Disgusting. You're nasty. But, I yeah, that that's like always the round two one. It's like, eat this nasty thing. Yeah. Half the time it's like, eat cow brain or a bull testicles oh yeah the bull testicles those are very those are very uh famous that's a very in-demand item on the <laughs> yeah. factor every other episode is like you ready to eat bull testicles and everyone's like no no fucking way and then they're like then it's actually a delicatus delicus delicate thank you anita for the sub hi delicacy delicatessy yeah. Delicacy. Delicacy yeah. in some cultures, and they're like, no, not in my culture. Like, no, no. man, that's <laughs> fucked up, no. <laughs> yeah. So that's just, that's Hi Guy on Broadway. Have you ever had a great testicle kebab? Fuck no. But I'm ready to try, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Bring back Fear Factor so I can eat some fucking balls. For real, for real. <laughs> Mm. But the, but the pizza, I remember, so the tomato was swapped out for like cow's blood or something. And then uh -oh. there were eyes on it for pepperoni. Oh, yeah, it's like goat eyes were on it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe like small jellyfish or something. Or crickets, I think. Crickets. Some shit like that, yeah. yeah. Just all dumb shit. And then they were like, bon appetit. And the people just went, oh, 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 I'm going to throw up. I would throw up, don't get me wrong. But mm. it, the best part about watching that is always watching how the other people react because they're like gagging while they watch the person eat. <laughs> they're always like, <laughs> Bleh. Bleh. and then they put their fucking like head in their hand. <laughs> like they can't fucking believe this other person is also eating it. <laughs> Fear factor judge, do you have the balls? Contestant, fuck yeah, judge, do you want more? <laughs> Opens up bull testicle play. <laughs> that sounds like something they would have done on Fear Factor, yeah. Yeah. In the UK, also high chaotical. In the UK we have a show, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, where they stick some sea listers in the jungle. There's an obligatory food challenge which always has testicles. Yeah, that's how you know it's a good show. That is a good show. And they put sea listers on there. Because <laughs> the A and B that. listers wouldn't do that. Oh God, we should. Not. Oh, I would like. Well, while I have everyone here, what would you like to see covered sometime? Because for next week, we would like to do Squid Game if Bebop manages to uh, watch all of it in time. But just for like, for you know, for the future, because we just kind of do whatever right now. What we've both had uh, time yeah. for exen did i miss it hi exen well we went through kind resident of. evil <laughs> now we're just kind of talking cool are like really low level actors like yeah. an a-lister is like a huge movie star you know tom cruise fucking tom cruise uh <laughs> jennifer are like below aniston that, like... is jennifer aniston even an a-lister really though no she used no, to be Jennifer Aniston, and yeah, and her heyday was. Now Jennifer Aniston is an example of a B yeah. listener. So yeah, people who are like not really in big blockbusters, maybe they're in some like direct to video bullshit that just ends up on DVD or on Netflix or whatever. And then C lister would be even lower below that. So probably people you've almost never heard of. Hmm. Mm. Um, but back to Fear Factor. I was also thinking last night before I saw the card challenge that I also remember watching it like as a kid and it just felt like the kind of show that just shouldn't have existed. Mm -hmm. It still doesn't feel like a real show. Yeah. That's it. I just really, it feels really interesting <laughs> and surreal to watch it because it's like, I'm sure they signed waivers. It's like, if I fucking split my skull in half doing this challenge, I can't do anything. But they're doing some like pretty crazy shit even though they're like attached to wires for all the like stuff where they're high up and could fall you know mm -hmm. but they're also putting them in cages with like three gallons worth of like scorpions and shit <laughs> and scorpions. like yeah i'm sure they're not they're not deadly poisonous or anything but like what if one fucking crawled up your nose there's like centipedes in the tank well if you want to know the truth well animals often actually don't go for warm holes because they know that it's another animal and they could get no, but hurt. that's the thing that's the thing one did it was a celebrity episode of fear factor and coolio <laughs> the guy who does the the gangster's paradise song from sonic the hedgehog the movie mm -hmm. um he was on it and one was trying to go up his fucking nose <laughs> That's what made me think about it. All right, well, mo okay, most animals don't do it. Some uh, some have been known to uh, go up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not even the worst one. There are also ones where, like I said, they have like a fucking wire on them most of the time doing a lot of those, if not all the challenges. So if they fall, it's not a big deal. But like, what if they like fell off a thing and then it fucking flung them back and they slammed into the car or something? And they do sometimes. Well, they I do have one where... waivers. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, of course, but also, I don't even know if you could show this shit on TV now, waivers or not. Mm, probably adult TV, yeah, but I don't think children, because I watched it when I was like 10, right? So I, I watched it when I was like five. <laughs> I was way too young. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had dial-up internet while we 
when I was watching Oh it. my god. Maybe I was a bit younger, but I don't think I was five. Jesus. I was way too young to be watching these people, like, swim down into the into water and like almost pass out from losing too much oxygen or fucking <laughs> climb up a sky rise and almost fall off there's also one where they just make them jump out of a window from like 20 stories up and they're like go ahead oh my god <laughs> they have a wire attached to them to be fair oh no still. But they, they just they just like free fall until uh, they get close to the ground and then it slows them down i hate free falling so much Someone could have a fucking heart attack. They do have waivers. There's no way they wouldn't have waivers. Oh, absolutely. They won't even let you fucking smell Joe Rogan's <laughs> hair without signing a waiver <laughs> on that show. But I, you, someone easily could have fucking just died. That's true. But that's in the waiver. <laughs> yeah, it's all in the waiver. Yeah. So it's okay. Fear factory... Factory? Serious injuries. Fear factory. Fear. Yeah, just show me the whole factory. I mean, they gotta make it somewhere. That's true. Fear factory, total deaths. Rat smoothie lawsuit. Rat smoothie lawsuit? Don't listen, Baljet. Don't listen to this. This particular close call might seem a little ridiculous, especially when you discover that the person in question was never anywhere near the set of Fear Factor. Okay, hold on. This is interesting. There was an episode of the show where the contestants were given dead rats, which they had to shove into blenders in order to make smoothies out of them. Then, of course, the contestants had to drink the smoothie. The guy watching this episode said his blood pressure skyrocketed. He became ill faint and threw up all over <laughs> oh, no. and then he sued them you can't sue them did yeah, he lose he didn't win that one yeah clearly yeah, absolutely uh, that's because of the waiver <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you can't sue fear factor for something that I you mean, signed well he didn't even sign anything he was just watching the show at home he was just watching the ridiculous. show at home that is ridiculous don't yes. fucking watch it dumbass yeah I remember me and my friends always hyped each other up, like, I'll go to Fear Factor and win. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, me too, when I was 10 years old. With my whole two friends. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that was a... I don't I still don't understand. They still make this show? Or did they stop making it? No, no, no. They fucking stopped making the show okay. years ago. Okay, I was gonna say, because they, they, there's no way this shit will fly now. No. There's no way. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't think this could be on television now. No. In the form that it is now. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. Is fucking something else. <laughs> It really is. It really is. That's right. They did have another run of the show. It had Ludacris the Rapper as the host, I believe. <laughs> Ludacris? Do you remember this? Yeah, Ludacris. Very likely, I do. Without any details, that happened, though. That happened in 2011, 2012. And then they brought it back in 27, 2018. 2018? Oh my god. I wonder if it was like baby mode. It has to be. There's no way. Probably. It was by MTV. That was the one with Ludacris on it. Okay, that's got to be baby mode. I don't think MTV would do anything crazy. Probably not. Alright, Fear Factor contestants. Today you're going to find out who's been catfishing me for five months. Alright, today you guys are going to have to watch as many episodes of Catfish as you can. And the first one to give up, you're out. So, and it's only the episodes without Max. Yeah, all 357 episodes that have been produced in the last three and a half weeks. <laughs> and it's Neve only, actually. Actually, it's just Neve's personal vlogs. You all are <laughs> going to watch Neve's personal vlogs for as long as you can endure. So good luck. And whoever can stand the longest, you get you win a date with Neve. You win a date with Ludacris. Ludacris will kiss you on the cheek. Oh my god, I want that. I want that so bad. Please, I just want a Ludacris. A little Ludacris from Ludacris, perhaps? Poggers? 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 Poggers! Poggers! 
pot girls. <laughs> I would love that so much. Also, okay, I, I did go. completely forget that I would I would start the movie night at 6 p.m. Oh, fuck. Uh, I did apologize Hi, already. I said I said it would be in 30 minutes or less. So you do have right. a good 15 minutes. <laughs> movie night is like a pizza. 30 minutes or less. Or it's or, free. Or it's free. It's free anyway, but it's free. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> Unless. Oopsie. Abe's oops sound goes here. What does he... How does he sound? He goes, oops. He goes, oops. Does he? He goes, oops. <laughs> oops. Oops. Follow me. Follow me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Follow me. And get the oop sound. That's okay, Kuro. You gave me all the sounds that I needed. Oogie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> that one's arguably my favorite <laughs> when he farts into la and laughs. <laughs> me too. How how funny do you think the devs of the game thought it was when they when they thought of it? They thought that was pretty funny. They thought they were really paving the way for comedy in a video game, I think. I think so, too. They're like, when the player has to press the fart button to get mm -hmm. the emoticon to come with them, they're going to fucking lose it. Remember when the fart explodes and you can control the fart, too? Remember when you fart and you blast off and you start the second game and you're just farting the whole time? <laughs> Remember that? Remember in Munch's Odyssey when you control a fart the entire game? Remember in... Uh, Stranger's Wrath, where you shoot a fart. Yeah, I remember that. Where you too suck well. a fart through a straw. Yeah, and you go. <laughs> and you go. <laughs> and then it farts in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. That was my favorite part of that game, I think. I like that a lot. Remember the honestly. part where, where Abe goes. Il y aura un joli papillon. You remember that? Je suis te, à je suis te à ton. I, I pulled that. that straight from the the disc of Abe's Odyssey. Yeah. yeah. Huh. It's in the director's cut. Of course, it's not in the regular game. No, no. I don't. <laughs> I don't have the director's cut. You don't remember this part no, at it's, all. Curl. It's rare. You're the one who sang it. Curl, you're the one who made that song, and then they put it in the game. Curl, come on. Remember? <laughs> Come, Come on, on girl. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, girl. Look at Chumon. Come on. Come on. Look at him. Look at him. Bebop, look at him. Look. He's beautiful. Baldrat, this is what you could have been. <laughs> but yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, there is a movie night right after this in the Discord. We're going to be watching, we watching Halloween Town. I have no clue what it is, but people picked it. So, Halloween Town's pretty cool. It's pretty epic. Okay, we're going to watch that. I still have to figure out how, but I'll figure it out. You didn't download it? I can't download it. That's illegal. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I'm I, getting it. I, okay. I'm getting it right now. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> You're going to go after I'm you. I'm getting Twitch. Listen to me. I'm going to go illegally obtain Halloween Town, the movie okay. by Disney. And Buy it kill on me. Amazon and we will watch it in 10 minutes. Listen to me, Disney. <laughs> if you're out there, it's a I'm Disney taking movie? Halloween Town. Yeah. Do you have Disney Plus? Wee woo, wee woo, wee yeah. woo. <laughs> no. Fuck. <laughs> never catch me but yeah so we're watching halloween town uh for next podcast episode again we would like to do squid game but if anyone has any suggestions as to what you would like to hear us talk about uh feel free to just let us know wherever wherever honestly <laughs> yeah <laughs> wherever if you have a game you like a movie you like a little tv show that is fun to talk about yeah, anything you like i'll fucking talk about it yeah We'll just take a look at it. We'll go, mm, that's pretty cool. And then cover it here, right here. So go ahead. Let us know and I'll go, wow, 
Very cool. Go ahead. Make my day. Go ahead. Make me happy. I dare Go you. Go ahead. I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> huh? mm. Let's kill Disney. What? Anita. Disney. That's not good. You shouldn't. Walt you shouldn't say that. <laughs> you shouldn't say that at all. Mm. Why not? No, mm, okay, you're right. That's a good argument. Walt Glisney. Walt Glisney. Walt Glisney. He's already dead. He is Here. dead. What? Walt Glisney. Oh, good job. Ha ha ha. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying what we all thinking. Shit, you're right. Say more. <laughs> say a little more, Just but a, also a little a less. Bit, a little. Say less, Queen. Say less, but also say more. <laughs> but okay. also see what? more. What? <laughs> stop! Stop calling my name. Whenever, whenever Here? someone stop. Whenever I hear someone like when I watch streams, a lot of the time people kind of start talking about their hair on their head, right? And whenever I say they, whenever fuck, whenever they say that, I just go, I perk up and I go, huh? Someone talking about me? Me? Hello? <laughs> oh, Bebop. <laughs> Do Neil go over there? I'm getting everyone in the Halloween Town mood. Okay, this is the Halloween. Stop! Everyone, stop. <laughs> I can't say that. Hair. Stop! It triggers my fight Hair? or flight. You better start fighting. <laughs> hmm. Alright, but I would uh, cut it off here and uh, go prepare for Halloween Town for the Discord. So if anyone wants to join us, get in there. Okay. We'll start very soon. Yes. I'll just go people real quick. Yes. And that's it. T-posing? No. No. This is beyond T-posing. <laughs> this is Y-posing. This is yoga. Oh. This is Halloween. Oh, it's beautiful. You're like underwater and shit. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll do a little raid. I'll do a little raid. Uh, but thank you everyone for coming to this episode of... Okay, so basically... Uh, Resident Evil 7. <laughs> I hope you like the yoga. Uh, Bebop's already getting in the in the mood. Um, next time, hopefully Squid Game. If not, something else. Mm -hmm. Suggestions, wherever. I will read them. <laughs> Hi, Crude. Yes. That was great. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for watching. If thank you're you. watching in the future, thank you for listening and watching. If you're watching now, you're very epic. Yes, if you're watching in the past, how'd you get this? let you in i'll let you in there <laughs> okay we're gonna go raid now but again halloween town let's go all right who should we go, raid go, 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 hmm. go, go. okay let's raid this person do you trust please tell us how <laughs> how bad <laughs> oh god how bad indeed all right oh, thank you again and bye. goodbye goodbye